Greetings, everyone. Welcome to episode 12 of Forbidden Frontier. We missed last week. Sorry. Yeah. Sad seas. It's, it's fault. Blame me. Was it? I, I don't even I remember will. what happened last week. I don't know. I will. It's okay. No. Were you on vacation? I was also was. sick. So I was behind yeah, that's right. on work. Really behind on work. And I'm still behind on work. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I took a day off yesterday. And I went to some town in the middle of Texas, in the middle of nowhere, to uh, the Texas Garden Guys meetup with Melissa. A nice little drive up near Garden? Houston. Garden? Benville, Bainville, Someville, Bennyville, Benny mm. Johnsonville. Not Benny, really sure. Benny Johnsonville. Someville. Someville near Houston is nice. It's, it's, dude, it's like, uh, it's weird being in a state where you can see spring. Because in California, you see two seasons, basically. Yeah. Winter for like a minute. Uh, it's fall for like a second, but it's mostly just the same. It's kind of brown and green. Yeah. Our our, our, our uh, seasons here in Texas are summer, 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 spring, summer, summer, summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have. And there uh, might be a week there where it's like winter. Well, uh, Pretty nice we've heard. We've heard. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes that's a really bad winter. It's really bad. Yeah, pipes yeah. bursting. Yeah, Bad. completely unprepared, unprepared for it. Yeah. Nobody knows how to drive. Pretty great. But you don't have winter tires down there. It seems no. ridiculous if you do. All season tires. Just get all, all season. Seasons. Yeah, you know, the lease. That's what I got. I, I just winter um, tires the work really well. Adam's internet is down in his funky little European country. Euro internet. Euro internet. <laughs> Euro trash internet. <laughs> Euro trash internet. No, he might come on. We'll see. <laughs> right now you just got us or get chains yeah chains oh i like the sounds of that mm -hmm. hey, you put chains sure on the tire do. i'm sure you do <laughs> so we're going to continue our conversation on the on ancient archaeology and get into some fun stuff starlink i know we were just talking about Starlink. we're just talking yeah. about that right before yeah. we were just talking about I it I like in our minds right now and if you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes or any of the other places, iHeartRadio, thanks. We appreciate it. I have no idea who's listening. There's, I, there's no real way to check analytics. So, But the, you're out there because you tell us. You tell us. Yes. That's we appreciate you. Uh, the uh, Texas Garden guy told me, told me he just listens on the RSS feed. So I'm like, that's cool, too. Perfect. Oh, There you go. Hey, if you are listening on one of those platforms, give us a rating or a review Ooh. those really help in the podcast space it's kind of yeah. like a like you know on youtube you like here you're right there it helps that's right mm -hmm. smash that like button smash that like button, button and uh support this show because this show is uh a big part of the future of what i'm gonna do of what we're all gonna do including building it up we're building it up and uh in a year's time we're gonna start well, actually, this year will be our first, like, but we're not going in another country. We're going to contact in the desert, but in Asheville. But after, next year, we're going to Egypt. So, <gasps> oh, yeah, I'm ready for the oh, adventure. Boy. I want to see you guys in the on camels wearing the wear. I'm going to get on a camel. If I'm going to Egypt, I'm getting on a camel. All oh, right. That, man. Getting on a camel. No. Carry on a camel. Be like John happen. Wick. I'll have my suit on in the middle of the desert. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be so miserable. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Garrett, how you doing, man? How was your trip? I'm good. It was good. It was great. Um, my kids loved it. Went to Harry Potter World. Since we went in the fall... I've been talking it up to the kids and we got the kids like they read all the way through to six book six on Harry Potter and they've been just like amping to go. So when they got there, their heads exploded. It was pretty great. That's brilliant. It was awesome. Kids uh, watching kids and, be happy is so magical because they literally perceive it as magic. Yeah, it's awesome. And I got them wands and robes and all that stuff. So they get older. They had a good time. And they get cynical. Yeah. Yeah. Aging. Teenage years. all away. It's all oh. right. There's cool parts about that, though, because you can leave them for like a week and not have to <laughs> <laughs> like take, take, take care, care of, of your own, right? 
here's food in the fridge. Don't light anything on fire, and we're good. We're like, we're gonna miss you guys. We're like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, they grow up so fast. We do. Just really playing do. Fortnite all day and night. <laughs> right. Uh, it was a good time. How 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 did you go? You were sick like the whole time. I was sick, and I worked through it all. It's fine. It's that's the best part about this job is I can just feel like crap, and it's fine. As long as my voice sounds okay, it's fine. I'm just sitting yeah. down bullshitting. So I mean, it's not like it's do that sick. No, it's missing workout that sucked. Uh, but those are back, so I'm very happy about that. Getting ready for Vegas. I'm very excited about it. It's gonna. This is gonna be a good time. And, oh, so uh, excited! And I can't. June is gonna be nuts for us because we have two Forbidden Frontier events. Again, we have Contact yeah. in the Desert the first weekend. Then I believe it's the second or third. We've got Asheville. We got big plans for Asheville because. Uh, like we could say it right we can yeah say it. Uh, they've reached out to us and we're gonna do uh an affiliate link uh because because it, it's gonna be on you you can watch it on streaming you can watch the whole event on streaming if you can't make it through how tube i am a member of how tube just for randall uh and, it, and randall's got great stuff on there already uh and it's worth every penny like i think i paid like 30 bucks for his two uh atlantis it's like and I oh, listen, I listen to those things all the time. I got more than my money out of it. So, yeah, if that's the price of a DVD, essentially, but you get to keep it forever, you can download them, listen to them later. Randall's fantastic. Awesome. And that's his broken down version from the multiple hour, 10 part version that is on YouTube. It's just PowerPoints for like six hours straight. It's perfect. But, dude, his information is like he hits beats of information that's like, unbelievable. Like you're your brain is constantly stimulated with what? And you he'll know? just go like right through information like that. You'll be blown. You're like, oh my God, my brain is on fire right now. What is this? Hold, stop, stop. And he's just like, oh wow. He doesn't stop. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, you think Random. about it, it's logical, but like it was on Joe Rogan the first time I, I heard about like the ground rebounding from having massive weight on top of it. Exactly. Right? Stuff like that. He'll just walk right past it. And you're <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. That's yep. important. What? And then he's all, yeah, Lake Bonneville okay. has been rebounding, you know, uh, in, in the Nevada desert and parts of Utah for, you know, 10,000 years since it was there. And if you look to how big it was, it was it's what's left of uh, the, basically the Great Salt Lake is what's left of it. And for one, like that's where it small, which is weird. Uh, cool. But yeah, it's super cool information. It's really good. So I can't wait for Ash. We got other plans for it, but we're going to um, have guests. Uh, we're going to yep. talk to some guests. We're going to do minimum two live shows after the event to recap. So, yeah, it, June's going to be but the same thing for uh, we don't have um, with contact in the desert. We're just going and we're going to do a wrap up show. And if I manage to round up a guest or two, I'll try. I'll see what I can do. I haven't been there since uh, I'll never forget. I had just passed 100,000 subs when I got there. This is the first one they've had in the last two years, isn't it? Or three Since years? 2019. Wow. wow. And it's been uh, four years over. Yeah, it's been um, four years. And I thought it was done. I just thought it was done. They did a couple of online ones. Uh, and there's some good seminars there, but it's not the same, man. It's just not the same. And uh, they moved it to a different place. They had it at uh, in Joshua Tree proper in this like outdoor place that was awesome. Uh, the new place is cool. It's a hotel, oh. but it's in lovely Palm Springs. Which I think I, it should be outdoors. I feel like that's like the energy. Yeah. I'll take you up to Joshua Tree when we get there. Yeah. I'll, I wanna, I'll, I've I'll, always wanted to go to Joshua we'll Tree. Go there, we'll go there at night. You'll see more stars than you've ever seen in your life. All right. Uh, what am I talking about? Contact in the Desert, which is one of our events early June. And then it's Asheville, the Cosmic Summit. Uh, which is okay. So contact them. There's going to have Graham Hancock as well, but it's like UFO guys too. So it's ancient civils. It's everything we cover. Um, Asheville will be ancient civilizations and it has Jimmy from bright insight. It's got, uh, I believe, uh, isn't uncharted X. Ben's going to be there. I think so. I know he's going to be there. I think he said he's going to be there. Um, I don't know if he's going to be part of the show, but I think he is. And the Graham and Randall, and, Cos and Cosmic Tusk. So it's going to be pretty freaking cool. Pretty cool. And uh, I can't remember the last time I was in North Carolina. I think I was like seven. 
So it'll no. be interesting. So yeah, Cosmic Summit Summit is June sixteenth. Sixteenth, yeah. So it's like two weeks after contact in the desert. We're gonna be contact. busy. Desert. June's slowish for pop culture anyway. It's kind of a slow month. Yeah, it's like everybody get, waiting to get into the summertime. Oh, you get Comic Con the next Comic-Cons month. Comic Con. That's, where, that's and, where it like yeah, announcements get revved up and then when TV comes back in later in the year. We're but we're getting late in the summer and like I don't even know what movies. Oh, the Blue Beetle movie comes out in August. Trailers leaked, apparently. It leaked. Yeah, it's going to be a flop. Couldn't care. Uh, And I was just telling uh, X-Ray Girl and Quarter Black, I've been doing a Mandalorian review all day, so I have to like stop about an hour before the show and just watch a documentary to get my mindset back back (laughs) out of the pop culture war and get into this. Because my God, is it bad? But um, <laughs> how you doing, X-ray girl? I'm doing good. I um, am getting into more nerd culture. I started Warhammer 40k plastic crack building, and it's been fun so far. I haven't gotten to painting yet. I want to build the whole army first. There's Dangerous. 19 models, um, and Dangerous. I'm doing it with Max von Priestley. Uh, so that's fun. He's definitely. Uh, more of an expert than I am. So, yeah, you want to watch that Sundays, 10 a.m. Eastern. If, uh... I've been very patient, too. Yes. Yes, he's very like, patient. He's very yeah, informative. With so. video games with me. <laughs> <laughs> when so, are you going to come on? Conan. <laughs> Conan. When I, oh, and I'm, I, I'm probably live next in my weekend. house. Probably next weekend. Uh, because I'll be done with Mandalorian. I'll take a couple days off before whatever else happens. But I had those the two. Thing. Those were these are videos that were planned. Like the Marvel one that just came out was planned. It was supposed to come out like three days earlier, but I couldn't get to it. And uh, so that's pushed Mandalorian back. That's why you get that one Tuesday or something like that. It should be a quick turnaround on that one. It's pretty just simple. Just a shitty show. Yeah, fun of some show. Uh, but um. Where do you want to start, X-ray girl? Ah, uh, uh, the Antikytherium. Oh my god, I can't. Antikytherium yeah. me- mechanism. Antikytherium mechanism. Did I say it right now? Yeah, I think I. All right, that's I cool. Yeah, yeah. Here, let's. Because they kind of talked a bit about it. it, even in the second, the follow-up, but just a little bit. Did that? Okay. Did that documentary hit us up for even showing stills? No, no, I think it was just the played audio. No, when we played it. Oh, I can and, uh, show stills. We can show stills, yeah. We can show it not moving, in other words. Pictures. Not moving pictures. This is the point in the Here first documentary, ladies and gentlemen, if you're playing at home. It's about halfway through after all the math, which is mind-blowing. So to recap the math real quick, they're finding uh, castles. They're finding in on the H-blocks in Bolivia in the pyramid they're finding a lot of very similar a a lot of similar things with the measurements and Mm -hmm. some things are cubits uh but a lot of things are straight up a meter yeah so the meter was invented in 1700 so i think it clear i'm just gonna say it because like these these people i can't say it what they can't say but i will they just rediscovered the meter okay this is a measurement that probably goes way back um and we know at least i suspect i highly suspect that a lot of the information we even have today is carried over from this previously missing civilization or or uh a civilization that just uh degraded over time or it could be both i'm thinking it could be both it's it's probably a little bit of both shit's a lot older than they say it is let's just i i think that there's there's text keeps that older. got burnt and that's why we can't find it a lot well, a lot of the things that are happening is just we can't find the information that connects it all like uh a quine a royal quine or keen sorry i think it's how it's pronounced this has is, the royal cubit but how are they correlated when they're so far apart in age theory mechanism is like it is one of the biggest smoking guns out there without a doubt well it shows how smart they were like smarter than and, us, and, and like this, this mechanism, it's not 
uh, just a one-off. It wasn't like a very super special piece of equipment. It was like a lot of people had it at that time. They they theorize they only found the one, but they believe that they were pretty much used across the civilizations. So I'm going off of memory. So it's like having a watch chat, now. Chat, feel free to correct us on anything. That's fine. Please do. But there was like 30 gears in this thing. 30. 30 separate gears. There's a big wheel that we saw, but uh, the doctor who had, uh, Dr. Price, who had originally seen this in 1950, it was found in 1911, put into a museum. Nobody knew much about it. Uh, this guy, Dr. Price, sees it and goes, holy crap, what is this thing? But it wasn't until 20 years later in the 70s when he's able to go to a nuclear lab and they were able to see inside it and then they, their mind was blown. They x-rayed it. Let me see if I can find yep. the x-rays. They, they Ooh, the here. x-ray is really, it's really cool. And you see how many gears, and I mean, it's decayed over time, but like, how did they build something like that? And not just circular, it's elliptical to mimic elliptical circles of the moon around the earth and all that. We don't even know how to do that. So the automatic... 2,000 years ago. It's from 60 BC. And the only reason we found it is on a Greek, Roman, Roman ship that sunk outside of the island of Antikytheria. And... That's the only reason we found it, because what happened with all metal objects back the, in those days is they were melted down and recycled. Yep. Melted. And that, and Turned into the, swords and... To tools that we talked Other metal. tools. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, like, uh, something like this, an artifact like this, makes me think even more that there is lost technology that we just do not know because it's been... There's nowhere to... We can't find it because it's been recycled or it's deep in the ocean somewhere. Like, who knows? Like, we've searched only, what, 10% of the ocean? If that, yeah. If even that. Imagine you, what could you know also be down there. We found this in a shipwreck. What else can we find in a shipwreck? 60 BC, not 60,000 BC. Sir Marhoff's 60. That's too far. Yeah, 60. 60. 60. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, you know, it's a couple millennia old. But here's the rub. This thing is a thousand years ahead of its time. And what the the two uh, guys they talk, talk to, I believe one is a scientist and one is a clockmaker, both said is there's no way this was a one-off. Like, I'm just going to invent this thing. I'm going right. to have a gear with 232 uh, little nubs on it, right? And and how do you come to that? Why do you, why is it two hundred thirty two? Why two hundred thirty two teeth? Why? Yeah. Well, and the clockmaker once again explains that these gears go in a motion where they spread apart and come back on what is essentially a differential um, to mimic the oblong rotation of the moon. And they had to have full knowledge of all the planets. Mm -hmm. And by a simple, they say press of a button, but they show a little crank. And I've seen a, a bunch of remade versions of this. I don't know what the actual device looks like. Mm -hmm. But it was like a little box, basically. And you could set it to a day. And you know where the stars are going to be in the sky that day. Based on all gears. All gears. So it wasn't just a one-off. And they even say in this, like, there had to be dozens of these. And the guy who made it had an extensive knowledge of the sky, of the planets, and then how to make this thing, and then not just how to make it, but make it in such a, a correctly clever and 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 simplistic way. But it, it's like simplistic is not the right. It, it's it was. I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It 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 maximizes the little amount of space it had to make this thing. So you aren't carrying around this huge device with you. So it's compact and mm -hmm. it's, it, so they had to have made many of these and then they found a book. Then they found a book that practically describes it from that time, but it was completely overlooked because they thought the guy was full of crap or a pamphlet. They found a, an old Greek uh, pamphlet where the guy basically describes this device. 
Wow. So there had to be more. So this and, isn't the only one. There were way more. Yeah, they, they just the, the, we found this by accident, and we probably never would have found it if the ship hadn't sunk. Yeah, because of the recycling. And sat at the bottom of the ocean for almost 2,000 yeah. years. The luck that it requires there, just that one thing that we could find, and we happened to find it. So it, what are the other things that we aren't even able to find because they've been they've rotted away or we've recycled them into other things? Mm -hmm. What could there what could be out there, man? Or things that like I, I often think about this too. Things in private collections. Yeah. That's yeah. a museum, like it sat in a museum and nobody even knew what it was. You know, some something that's sitting in the back of a museum or is in some billionaire's collection and only yep. his friends know about it or some crap like that. There's there's got to be more stuff out there. Uh, but this is uh, this is like finding, uh, you know, a motorcycle in the 1700s. This is uh, th they've made bigger analogies. Like we know how it works, though. We we know how it works, and and it's it's pretty incredible. Now there's a lot of other 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 out of place artifacts that get explained away a lot, especially stuff that gets found in like coal and stuff that just has mm -hmm. no business being there. Um. But this one, like, indisputable. It should not be, but it is. So now we have to rethink things. But instead of rethinking things, we got to go through this orthodox thing with archaeology, which is just, I mean, it's boring, for one. And there's so much evidence that there was some kind of contact back then, that there had to be people who could navigate the oceans. And I mean, I don't mean five, I'm talking 10,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. Oh, they definitely had to, especially with the way they built all those monuments around the world and, spe and the techniques the specificity of where they placed them. Like, it's crazy. There's no yeah. way they could have done that. Well, like, like the, the, the building techniques that span across the glo globe, like continents, massive spans of time and space. They are doing the same techniques. Yeah. It's not just coincidence. I mean, is it just is it just our our monkey brains follow the same path every no matter where we come from, or did somebody figure out a while back, tens of thousands of years ago, and go, hey, uh, you could also build it this way. Oh, you also build it that way. I'm going to travel to another place. You build it this way. It seems like the more logical explanation. Yeah, and, and you know what doesn't get brought up, that that's why it's good that more of this is being talked about by engineers geologists and and you know you think about things like you know when we were a kid nobody really thought about how the pyramids were built you know like but they yeah. required massive planning and not just mm -hmm. the structure itself its orientation its foundation like and, and then now we see that the pyramids mirror the belt of orion and there's there is passages that look at certain stars mm -hmm. yep. that requires a lot of planning by a lot of very smart people and it just isn't like slave put this block here you know yeah. that it, 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 it just it doesn't so and then you know go back lee Tepe blows everything away blows absolutely everything away what uh, a crazy find and they don't want to discover the other areas or maybe not at this moment, but there's so much they could find out, but they're not doing it. From the I think that's what's really sad about archaeology is that it, from what I've seen, I, I've been kind of looking into wh why do the archaeologists seem so hesitant to look into this stuff? It seems to me that a lot actually do, but they don't have the funding to do it because there's yeah. not anything that you, you can't really benefit financially by Digging, digging up Gobekli Tepe and finding out what's under it. They, you know, the the bean counters, the people that have the money that that donate, they don't think you can find anything. And they're like, why, why would I do that? Why would I fund this? So they go in other directions. So it seems that there are some archaeologists that want to find this out. They just don't have the funding. Yeah, we need to make. Well, I mean, science has done a very good job of making themselves not sex anymore and kind of annoying and dogmatic. Yeah. And that we need to find a way to to get these two groups together these two kids together let's, so it let's becomes make science sexy again back, back back in the day before my time scientists were rock stars remember uh i'm really into watching these old restored 
uh, films from the 30s where they're interviewing like Civil War veterans and stuff like that. Like, dude, those are so cool. Or like uh, freed amazing. slaves. Yeah, Have you like, seen those too. Those really cool. You talk to like a lot of these guys and they'll ask them about their childhood and they're like, "Yeah, we played with chemistry sets." That was their toy. Yeah. <laughs> and that goes all the way through to the 50s and we stopped doing that. So, uh getting curious again and I think like this subject is is getting I think this subject is super sexy right now. I think the ancient civilization totally. thing has had a huge rebound thanks to Graham and Randall and Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan had a lot to do with this. This was stuff I was completely into, but man, YouTube had just completely washed itself of uh, you. If you look hard enough, you can find it, but there used to be so many more lectures by people like Graham and uh, David Hatcher Childress. Now they were trying to like, and I understand this, like these were their lectures. They should own that property and get the money off their channels. And and a lot of them have picked up on that and started putting stuff in their channel. We got Megalithomania. We got our Chartered X now. So it seems to be making a comeback after the very, very dark days of, you know, 2018, 19, 20, when UFOs and all that stuff was just wiped off this platform because of the disinformation algorithm, which could make a comeback. But Which could come back. Yeah. And that's why I tell... Uh, you know, a lot of these people should at, at this point for this subject, look in the rumble. Cause I think that's where rumble can make some headways too. Uh, you know, by not just being political, by allowing some of this stuff on there too. And let any, let anybody talk. You can get as crazy as you want. Who cares? We can figure it out. That's what, that was the beautiful thing about mm -hmm. Art bell. Art bell would have some insane episodes with some downright mad, mad Mardigan, like time travelers have the time traveler hotline. You know, but what it does is it it opens up your mind not necessarily to believe every single story, but to hear all of the different stories and go, oh, what what mm -hmm. I don't know about that, but that sounds interesting. Let's look into that. Like, think about how many kids or how many young adults listen to the Joe Rogan episodes and go, you know what? I really like archaeology. I would like to look into this. Yeah. I think we should look into this. And then they go to school to learn some more of this this these things, and then they go out in the field and then they investigate it. Like that, they've already said, like Graham has said this, uh, Randall has said this, like you have to wait for the next generation of archaeologists to, for science to move forward, for archaeology to move forward. Because the ones that have all of their, their knowledge dead set in their brain, it's not going to change, I've got my whole career built up on this, they're not going to change. But the new kids that come in and they find new things and they question, they're going to change the narrative. And that, that's already what we're seeing now. So I, I think you're totally right. I think archaeology and sciences are getting sexy again. It's getting interesting to go look into these things and try and explain why is there this mechanism that we can't explain? Why is there a, why is there a site far, far before the time period that it should be in and using techniques that they should not be using? It's a, it's, Peaking people's interests again, I think. Yeah. And again, we got we got a couple of youngsters out there doing good work. We got Jimmy, from Bright Insight, and uh and Ben from our chartered X. Like that's yep. the next generation. Gives me hope. Their stuff is so good too. Yeah. Uh we might be talking uh one of those. Mm. 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 Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um but yeah, the, the Antikythera mechanism is like, it's always been mind boggling to me uh, and I've known about it forever, but I, you know, and I don't know if that's what it really looks like, or if that's just a representation in this documentary. This uh, one is the recreation, the, the clockmaker that they interview, this guy, he so recreated just, it in, in a watch. So you can buy a watch. That's the oh, mechanism. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I need, I don't yes, wear watches, I, but I, I might wear that um, watch. Yeah. It's supposed to be, I, I have a note here, it's like 11 centimeters in size. So, so okay, that's his, wanna, that's his interpretation. Me, you want to tell me an American? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 11 cent, there's what, 3.45 inches? Inches, or centimeters in an inch. That's big. That's your that watch. Is big. 
That's one of those. Oh, fat think about watches. how many years it has, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd still wear it. It's probably costed like what a hundred thousand. Oh my god! Can you get like Look the big it. one then hang French it off watch the chain? Watchmaker or Greek? What is it? Look at that thing. Oh, wait, maybe it's not eleven cent. That is the oh, replica, or I think this hand? is it. This one right here. Know. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But that's got to got cost a fortune. I'm sure it does. So <laughs> two point five four centimeters is an inch. Thanks, chat. You guys. I never said I was smarter than you. Because I'm a not. lot. <laughs> Either way, it's gonna be a chomper. Ten inches. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a, there's yeah. a boutique in Dallas. I could go to his, yeah. his store. Something oh, I thought also it. was cool is the documentary did mention that this existed before watches did. Yes. He, right. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Same. So I I okay. I'll just lay out my theory. Uh, I don't need to be cautious. I could be wrong. I'm a big dummy. So I think a lot of this information comes from the mother civilization called Atlantis, whatever. And that information, a lot of it has survived through many of the burnings of our libraries and what it has been. It's been kept by the elites, the, the church. Uh, we all know the Catholic church uh, has a library that I believe now lives in Canada. Okay. That nobody can get into. Thanks for girl. Nobody you can get in. Uh, try, now, try. That, that's, you know, that's just, again, this is my theories. Uh, we also have, you know, governments, billionaires, oil tycoons, all ha probably have scraps of this information, but it was kept by the elites so they can maintain their power, including the high priests of whatever religion at the time. And uh, there is lots of little stories about them, like uh, lights, illumination. That doesn't require a candle. They they would call it the candle or or the, the flameless candle or something like that. I forgot what they called it. But there's a bunch of stories of tombs, uh, certain rooms that had a light on all the time. Back in the Roman times, back and I'm going through all this in a in an older book by uh, David Hatcher Childress right now. So I think they had a lot of this technology, and they just it's just the elites had it, and the rest of us didn't kind of like it you know so more things change the more they stay the same you know yeah. and uh you know we already know they had batteries the baghdad battery which i'm first time i heard that that was you know years and years ago but that blew my mind and it was used to work on jewelry on gold uh but uh there's also the hieroglyphics of the the guy holding the big old freaking light bulb <laughs> in in egypt that they try to say is either a lotus flower or whatever. It looks like a damn light bulb. Stop it. Um, so yes, I think they the elites uh, passed on certain information, and it's ancient. And China, man, like it doesn't get into enough. Like how much, how many things they invented, <laughs> like a long time ago, a long, long time ago, and then stuff gets forgotten. So. As Randall and Graham and many others have said, time is not this this just straight line, this progression. No, it, it is a it is a roller coaster ride. It is peaks and valleys of civilization rising, falling, rising, falling. And in that fall, we lose a lot of stuff. And it gets talked about a ton. If there is the great equalizing magnetic pulse that happens over our country, it blows out all of our transformers it's a year until we get all of our power back it's a, a minimum a year and if it takes that long we are screwed yeah. that, that's like a domino effect we're going to be going yeah. back in time faster and faster every week yeah people will be carving sticks and poking each other within a month a month I three days guarantee it. <laughs> hunger said an article. That people will well, what the guy said on Tim Pool is 90 days. A lot, a lot of people are dead in 90 days. Mm -hmm. Finding food is hard when you don't know how to find food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or even All these water. crazy people that are like preppers and like making their own gardens and stuff. Comics. They're going to be tremor in a good spot. Not teach you anything, okay? Who, who are the survivors? Preppers, man. Campers. Open wrong goddamn den. Mm-hmm. Bear Grylls, he's going to be a survivor. Oh, he needs his production team to feed him. <laughs> like, 
for this information making its big comeback all about less waves but like we had art bell in the 90s and early 2000s and for whatever reason everybody seems to have forgotten him but there is no graham hancock there is no rand randall carlson there is no alex jones there is no ancient aliens and Giorgio sukalos and david hadrick childress or richard dolan or George Nor Nori, or any of, or Gaia Networks, or any of this without Art Bell. Art Bell is the dude. Uh, sure, there were some books and stuff before that, and before that there was In Search Of, but Art Bell, there's no X-Files without Art Bell. X-Files was practically, like, like based on his show. Stealing from his show, okay? So, like, yeah. Art Bell was the man, the guy could tell a story, it's one of the best interviewers I've ever heard. One of the best voices for radio I've ever heard. None of this happens without him. But then you got to carry it forward to Joe now. Joe Rogan is now the guy willing to talk to these people. He's like the new Johnny Carson. His show gets listened to and watched more than anybody. Uh, and we got to thank him too. Yeah. You know? Well, he's taking he's taken the Art Bells of the world, the Johnny Carsons of the world, and like taking those things and put them together. And he's a whole new product. You know, he, he can talk to somebody that that uh, was abducted by aliens or he could go and talk to a celebrity or he could talk to uh, the man, the guy with the mammoth pits. And then he could go talk to Randall. And he, he has so much capacity because he's just a dude that's interested in hearing people's stories. So he could hear anybody's story and nobody is telling him what stories to listen to. So... And that's a that's a beautiful thing. It is, and, and you know, Art had that power because he had the biggest overnight radio show on the planet, uh, the most affiliates, and uh, you know, every trucker was listening to him overnight. Mm -hmm. I every kid was listening to him overnight. We talked about him at work all the time. Uh, it was it was a magical time for that stuff. He had, a, a, and you can find, I there there is an archive on Coast to Coast if you want to sign up, but I'm sure there's better archives out there. Um, and it's stuff you can listen to his stuff today. It, it's it's insanely good. So never forget art. I'm gonna not let anybody as long as I'm around. I, I want to because I don't. I haven't listened to his his stuff like as much. I've only heard like three episodes, but I've heard you talk about him a whole lot. And I want to find an archive that I could just listen to. Cause you're always talking about these stories and I'm like, there's nowhere for me to even go to watch it. Really. There, it's all like behind a paywall. There's, that I need to. there's a YouTube channel that does like, it gets, it gets hit all the time by coast to coast, but now they're just put like doing 12 hour. So there's That's what like I was like, I was trying hours. to find, I was writing the, the intro for our show, like the, the narration and i was trying to get some art bell inspiration and i was like what was what is a good intro that he did and it was like really hard to find sell tapes but there is an archive on coast to coast am there is okay and uh if i can get one of my old apple drives from like 10 years ago that where the power supply died if i can get that thing working which i think i can <laughs> it's still there the data's there <laughs> I, i've got hundreds of episodes hundreds yeah, because I'd love to go back and listen to those yeah. those interviews. But yeah, like um, it's Periscope, right? Gutsy seven seven Art Bell Periscope, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah, because you get the bumper music and everything. And the bumper music, it's not Art Bell without the bumper music. Mm. It's the whole package. The whole Nancy show. Sinatra, stuff like that. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna read some super chats and then we're gonna like talk about the tools. Tools. The tools, yeah. The anti cathera mechanism, I think, explains a lot of the tools that just aren't there. Uh, Christopher Dunn talked about this in the documentary. He's all, for one, just like with Gobekli Tepe, just like we're finding at uh, Cusco and uh, Peru and Bolivia and Egypt and Greece, the better stuff is older. So they just, Get out the gate, awesome, and then it, then it declines. Check I this photo about, out. I found a photo of the. Oh, it's kind of a of better photo of this. Oh, oh my goodness! Can you make uh, the image just larger? So larger a little bit. Zoom in. There we go. Let me, let me see if I can open it in a different tab. Maybe. Yeah. 
I was just thinking about that statement about how like older stuff is better and how even within like say 20 years, like for example, cars, you know, the older stuff was better. And it's interesting how it spans even thousands and thousands of years. Older cars look cooler. That's for sure. I hate mm-hmm. older Run movies better, are better. Longer. And outside of a few rare exceptions, all modern cars look like bugs and poop. <laughs> yes. uh, That's why I get trucks. They don't look good anymore. No. Like there's a know, website about the, the like recreation. Hellcat. Hellcat looks good. That's a good looking car. That's a remodel version. Yeah, there's, there, there's several actually in this. Uh, here, let's scroll up another. There's another one. Here's one that they built out. Yeah, see, I've seen like a gazillion versions, and I'm like, I don't know which one I believe. We'll never know 100%. We'll never know. Unless we find another one. That's but in this better one, condition. I think this one These looks... These things were bloody useful. So, like, yeah, you, you, it's going to be attached to a ship of some kind. And, you know, it, it's just amazing how we as humans as archaeologists would think we even we even are even close to figuring things out from the past we can't even keep our shit straight 100 years i mean look at like the arguments we still have over lincoln you know <laughs> and and <laughs> and the civil war and that's all documented okay yeah so uh, it's it's crazy okay let's just be real the the arguments Razor Fist has with Lincoln, but <laughs> I mean he has some pretty he's got, compelling. He has some very arguments. good points. I'm like dang uh, it, every time Razor Fist comes out with a video, I'm just like damn. I think I believe you now. It's so well like. Well, you got to look at history without blinders so on. Like he's been de- like Lincoln's been deified since we were absolutely in school. And sure, yes, Lincoln Park, good stuff. Lincoln Park, yeah, did some good stuff. But then. <laughs> he didn't. He did some stuff that led to. Let me let me give you a pop culture equation for it. Jar, uh, Jar Jar Abrams Star Trek. At first, when it came out, everybody seemed to like it. Everybody's fine with it. I was fine with it. Everybody's fine with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little silly, but we were fine with it. You know, it's a different timeline. We had no idea what that was going to do. Star Trek. Now that we're like years in, we're like, fuck that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Yeah, the ramifications because of what it opened the door to. So maybe that's kind of the way we look at it. context. All maybe. requires a little context. Okay, so we've got Crash six six seven four for twenty dollars. Thank you, Crash. You nerds need to start getting guests on. Get Randall and especially with Adam flaking out. So now, Adam didn't flake. Internet, his internet flaked. His internet. Actually, our fault. It was our my fault last week. Adam had every intention. As a matter of fact, Adam's like, I don't see the stream up. We, we're yeah, he's like, it. what's going on? Yeah, like, <laughs> like, we're doing it today, buddy. But then, uh, but no, no. Adam's only missed two, and he'll be here when he can. But uh, we will get guests. Like, we got, I, I okay, it's a process. It's in the work. I, I want to I do it with just us for a little while, right? Just so we can get it, because, you know, I'm not going to consider this show like really rolling for like a year. It's going to take us a year to get our chemistry together, get our mm-hmm. shit together. Cause like you guys asked and we listen to you, you want something that's a little more planned. That's not how I stream normally. So I'm, it, I'm just going to, we're, we're going to work our way up to it. Okay. Because the plan is to do this more than once a week eventually. Right. So that means I have to get my, my time <laughs> Uh, a little more organized and I've never worked that yeah. way. That's the beauty of the channels. I just kind of go by feel. I make a video uh, when a subject comes up and I make it at three in the morning or six at whenever I'm ready, you know uh, it's, it's nice, but uh, this requires preparing time because we want to sure. give you the most, for one, it needs to be entertaining, not just information, entertainment. Uh, and uh, it, you know, and it's subject it's subject i absolutely adore and loved all my life so i could do this till the day i die but our first guest comes up uh may in may okay so we're getting there we're getting and it's good it'll and it's a good one it'll be worth it it'll be totally it's worth always it. worth the wait guys it's kind of like we hit it out of the park 
on our first guest. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. And it's and it's somebody uh it's not Randall, but we we we'll get Randall. But um it'll happen. It's it'll somebody happen. I've been watching for years. For years. Uh Ruben Christopher Haynes, gentleman, scholar, beautiful man. We love you, Ruben, has gifted 20 nerdrotic memberships for one hundred dollars. Stop. Ruben has more fight in his little finger than most of us have in our entire body. Just tough saying. dude. Tough dude. Ruben Christopher Haynes for $20. The Antikythera mechanism is a computer analog. It was built for navigation. It is a fine-tuned device that can accurately predict tides, planets, comics, etc. Yes, they set a data and they set a data and bang, there you are. I will build one. I would I would love to see you, dude. Do it. I'll pay you to build one. I want one. <laughs> I freaking want one so bad. Um, you know what? G- Giorgio gave me, uh, you know, that uh, the cover of the tomb from Mexico or Peru of Quetzalcoatl that looks like he's in a spaceship. Yes. So he made like this, uh, c- not ceramic, but uh, it, like ceramic like, you know, uh it's probably resin probably just resin uh replica of it and he was selling it at contact in the desert he saw me he gave me one signed the back said what's up dude uh and and i have it hanging here i i i want more stuff like that and i'll pay for it i'll have to find a photo of that because it's such a cool um is it relief it looks like a relief let me see carving i'm trying to find a picture of it yeah, it's like somebody like it's like they put uh they put something down and pulled it off and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. carved in relief. Uh, it's 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 molded. It's it's definitely molded. You can hang it on the wall. It's like 1117. It. It's about how big it is. I mean, I can go find it in a second. I found it. Giorgio's a lovely guy. Giorgio is a lovely guy. This one you're talking about? Uh that's it. That's exactly what I have. Oh, that's pretty- Yeah, it's really cool. Yep. And and I'm sure he'll be selling them uh, when at. Uh, I, like at I'm pretty sure he's going to be a con. And maybe he doesn't do contact anymore because of Alien Con. But uh, if you see Giorgio at it, like Alien Con, I'm sure he's selling stuff like this. He, they I have like he's a, a, it, examples of what it would look like, what the design looks like. Him in a cockpit. It's pretty crazy. That's what it looks like. It's pretty crazy. That's about, you. You got to thank Ancient Aliens for for the. Uh, I think the resurgence too. Uh, I think a lot of people, even David Hatcher Childers, who's regularly on that show, does not agree with the alien hypothesis. He's more of a, it's men who did that, like super advanced men. I, I like, agree with that 100%. I agree with that too. Not to say that there hasn't been aliens here in the past, because there has been. Absolutely. Absolutely. Greetings from Portugal. Hail Portugal. Welcome. I love, I love that we get to talk to people around the world. Uh, cockpit like a vagina. Oh, see, and then we, you know, exactly. Then there's our regulars, there's our regulars here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bless your heart, people. Rob Robinson for twenty dollars. Love all your channels. I hope you are all having a good day. Rob, thank you for the twenty dollars. I am having a wonderful day. Fantastic, thank you, man. Yep, I hope you are having a wonderful day. Uh, Josh Kelsey has donated twenty dollars. Thank you very much, Josh. Josh. Nothing Josh, you rule. Nick S for nineteen ninety nine. Gary, if the alien show doesn't work out, then you should try a Clarkson's Farm type of show, the Nerd Rotic Farm with Quarter Black. Oh wait, wait a is second. Is that racist? Um, hey, well, only if I made Quarter Black do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Well, it's not a cotton farm, right? <laughs> oh, oh no, exactly it is. No, um, I think my wife would like that my wife would like that a lot she's super in the gardening now because we have a yard uh, like a, a yard re- so cute <laughs> we had a yard before okay but our house was west facing in san francisco so it just got blasted by wind and fog all day long like it was not fun to be out you couldn't barbecue you freeze your ass off so now we have this like nice yard that she's gardening and yeah she's a uh, big fan of the, uh, the texas garden guy He's got a big TikTok and Instagram. He's a good guy. He also listens to the neurotic. So that was cool to see him yesterday. And wherever we were, I wanted to live there. 
it was just like in the middle of the country, everything was beautiful and green and lush and there was cows. And I'm like, I like it here, but there's no internet. It's kind of hard. Uh, Starlink. No, retirement. I mean like two Starlinks or something. I mean, other than, I guess like. other than the show, which I'll do until retirement, when I unplug, I am unplugging, dude. I am done. Just out. Bye. Last time I fully unplugged was 2013 for a month. Really? Yep. Oh my God. I love going on vacation where I unplug. I'm excited for uh, my August vacation. No internet, nothing. I don't know how I'm going to survive. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I do one of those too. Uh, so yeah. five for six pens says, Hail Forbidden Frontiers. Brought you, uh, bought you guys, what's this? From I Peru. Did. A sit, a, a STH from Peru. Sis? Yeah. Uh, was going to send it uh, together with G&G stuff in the house, or should I send it to Gary? Hail. Either, I mean, it, it would get to me either way eventually. Mm -hmm. You could send it to me. And uh, if you send it before Vegas, I could, if you wanted me to give the G&G stuff to them, I'll be seeing all of them in about uh, three weeks. What, whatever, Whatever's cheaper for you, SoFi. Whatever's cheaper for you. I know at the international shipping can get expensive. Less why than I, 20, almost 20 days. We'll be as, seeing them. I can't right. believe it. That's why as his birthday present, we'll get to him before his next birthday, but uh, I still in the mail. No, I, I haven't even sent it yet. We're going to send it. <laughs> Let's see. It's, it's, a, it's a chore. It's a bit of a chore because we want to make sure we've sent him stuff like from the UPS store and it never gets there. So we have to do it FedEx. FedEx is a little pricey. something reliable. It's a little expensive. Uh, Tim Weber for five dollars. Nothing much to say. Just want to give you all some money. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, keep up the good work, Quarter Black. Any thoughts on the game Redfall coming out? Redfall. Hmm. Uh, I will look it up. I don't know what I have to, to. I have to quickly acknowledge you said game. I don't care about college basketball. Like I could care less. But my hometown of San Diego has a team in a championship, which I can count on one hand over my entire lifetime. Now we've lost them all. San Diego has a very dark sports history. So congratulations to the SDSU Aztecs for making it to the college basketball national championship. Hope you win. I'm not going to be watching because I don't care about college basketball, but I do still have a soft spot for my hometown a little bit. And they're going to party like it's 1999. If they win a champion, if that's the first championship, though, damn it. Kind of wanted it to be the Padres, but uh, fully problematic for $10. Florida seasons two, summer, 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 fall, summer. <laughs> well, I, I guess it is. in Texas, we have like a little spring, <laughs> like a tiny spring, but it's, it's beautiful. Like, I, yeah, it, I went outside yesterday, you know, I touched some grass and it was so nice outside. It, the, Sun was warm. The so wind was kind of cool. Oh, it was beautiful it was so yesterday. Good. So, yeah, I was like an hour outside of Houston. And then Benneville? it was Benneville? 85 degrees the next day. Benneville? Benneville. Benneville? Some Benneville? Some fucking hill. I don't know. Someville. It had a water tower, and it had a nice little town, and this little pub, and it, they had a supper club, like a little building where you, like, all the people in the town go have a supper club, which is what? freaking awesome. Yeah, I love it. Nice small towns. Super Americana. That's what it was. And uh, yeah, this guy, uh, again, the Texas Garden guy had this meetup and there was like, okay, you want to pull some chicks? I mean, yeah, they're women, like grown ass women. Be a gardener. Be a gardener. Mm. Oh, yeah. All over the peaches. Place. I'm going to, I'm going to get, take Max and we're going to go gardening and I'll be his wing woman. <laughs> it was, uh, it, it, it it was nice to touch grass. It was very nice. Is, I don't get nice. out enough. I clearly do not get out enough. <laughs> but Dude, uh, I went out. So I went on the vacation. We went out in the sun, and I legit got a heat rash because I I have tanned. not been outside for a while. <laughs> I was you like, "What is this? Oh, it's heat. <laughs> it burns." Well, I used to have a a window in my office. Remember, you know, like I used to have a yeah, window. Was like right the there. Would come in, and I blocked my window, so I am in a windowless room. <laughs> Yep. You're literally in your man cave. Yeah. Yes. Uh, five picoseconds for 550. Canadian Graham Hancock's Fingerprints of the Gods, Magicians of the Gods in America 4 came 
in the other day. Can't wait to start them. Ooh. Oh, please do. That is That's quite exciting. a trilogy right there. You, Your mind will be utterly blown. And if you want to listen to them, they're actually really good audio books. Graham Lee reads the, the last the, the last two. And he's such a, he's great at reading his own material. Like he is. That's like, what I have. I have the. Audio I have a first. question. Yeah. Should you read them in a certain order yeah. or it doesn't really yeah. matter? Okay. You have to read uh, fingerprints first because okay. it's a, he's building a theory mm. or no hypothesis that comes, before, what comes before theory? Hypothesis. hypothesis. He's building a hypothesis, right? So he does fingerprints of the gods and he does some books after that. Those are the three main ones, but you really, I mean, you know, there's other books like underworld you can get to where he builds on that theory. And then he kind of said he was done. You know, there was a point where he was like, I'm kind of done. I've done what I could. I'm missing a lot of things. Then go back. Tepe kind of blows up and that caused him to go in to start that, that, that led into magicians of the gods which out of the three is the best book. The first book is a classic that everybody read back in the nineties, but the second book goes over stuff from the first book. And it is, it's amazing. Uh, America before it, it's almost like it, it was an afterthought. Cause he, he toured America with Randall Carlson and he's like, Oh, this is like a giant mystery. Like everybody just assumed America was this empty land that nobody lived in prior to 13,000 years ago. It doesn't make it's sense. Total bullshit. It's just utter bullshit. But then there's chapters in America before, and I've told this one before, and this one almost makes you pee your pants a little bit. This guy describes, so they found this um, dead mammoth where they're looking for, it, it was in Arizona. We can go visit this area, by the way, where they found that, uh, that black soot line, right? Mm -hmm. But they found a mammoth near there, and the mammoth is covered in that soot. And oh. it was in the process of being like slaughtered. Okay. So it got killed. They chopped the leg off and they probably like they being the Clovis people, which they haven't found the body of went back to the fire. And in that time, and this is purely a hypo, they, they were just like kind of spitballing it because they don't know what happened, but this thing was in the layer and there is no mammoth or Clovis people above this layer. So it was like one of the last ones. So it was on the ground when the ground. fire when came down. A hypothesis of like how it died. And they're like, well, what could have happened is there was an airburst above it. Uh, uh, a meteor airburst or one of the pieces of the comet came in airburst. And what happens during the, what could happen during this airburst is it comes in through the atmosphere so fast it blows a hole in our atmosphere. And then it blows up. So the thing got frozen to death and burned to death all within like a nano, a second of each other. Oh God, that sounds horrible. It's horrifying. <laughs> At least it's <laughs> quick. Horrifying. It's quick. And you don't know what hit you, but that's what hit you. And <laughs> oh my God. that chapter. And I had to like, I went, Whoa, wait a minute. And I had to go back and read it again. I'm like, God. And then Randall will, will scare the shit out of you too. Like in his first two, uh, like he scares Joe in the first, in his first interview. Yeah, when he starts explaining the wall of water yep. that rushed through America, and it's like, yeah, this is such... You oh, can't he, even imagine he, he the speed and size. The asteroids hitting the ice and, and the wall of water, but he also talks about the ejecta. So you have ice and, and ground going up in the atmosphere. Yep. The ice falls, that, that could be the Nebraska bays and the Carolina, Carolina bays because they fell in a certain direction. Um, and then there's the the earth ejecta, which catches on fire. So it comes back down as another meteor, basically. God. And it sets the entire country on fire. That is wild. 10% of the biomass disappears forever. That's plants, animals, people. 10% is insane. And it just, it wasn't just america but america got the brunt of it so that this might is something we fly through here. every twice a year twice, twice a, year. a year we will be heading actually as a matter of fact when we are in contact in the desert we will be going through it starting to go through it and all the way oh. to, go to Asheville, we'll be going through it and then it and it's like late october early november again so yeah 
I'm glad you, those books are ma- wonderful. Uh, Sir Marhouse for nine ninety nine off topic, but the uh, posterity for posterity's sake. Hey, I use that word in my next video. Uh, <laughs> I love Rob Inglis, uh, Lord of the Rings, but this week I found Phil Dragish's reading, which blew my mind. He includes great sound effects and Howard Shore soundtrack. The vibes. Um, yeah, well, the, uh, Andy Circus does one too, but I got to listen to that. Yeah, I just got used to Rob Inglis reading on uh, on his cassette recorder, and you can hear his wife like doing laundry in the background and stuff, and birds chirping and stuff. I kind of like it. It's comforting. Uh, Mega dudes for five dollars. Thanks for the content. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. Buford T. Justice for forty nine ninety nine. It says, you can call me whatever you want. Okay, you said so. But I think Wieland, uh, Wieland on the, oh, we landed on the moon. Oh, I think, I think we did too. I just don't think, I, I don't know if the footage is real. One of the biggest reasons why is I think is that Neil Armstrong uh, got back. He spent a good portion of his time in South America looking for lost advanced civilizations. Yeah. No, I think we went there. I do. I absolutely do. You can see. You can see it. You can find the flag. It's there. We went there. I just don't know if the footage made it, and this has been brought up by many other people because of the radiation. So uh, no, I think we went to the moon. I think what's more curious is why we haven't gone back. I think that's way more curious uh, best time is now for 999 let's face it we live on earth 2.0 maybe 3.0 uh, maybe stuff goes in cycles they just happens to be our turn and we have no memory prior Ag- agree agree uh rest of the cripple for five dollars gary perry is amazing when he put those fish tacos on the screen with that no. article that we're re- <laughs> no. reading called Victoria Alonzo and Gay Latina. I was laughing for 10 minutes. So was I. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Oh, man. That hit me so hard when I was watching it. <laughs> but the tacos. Very on genius. <laughs> and when so and Namor walks up. Oh, yeah. He just and stares. He just stares. I, that, that got me, man. That got me. So good. Yeah, he's great. Oh, and we get plenty of triggered people because of that. That and the thumbnails. Yeah, yeah. Uh thanks for the show today, guys. Just FYI, I got stuff. Uh I get stuff from Japan. Uh I get stuff from Japan to Texas via DHL all the time. They're pretty timely. We're the shop for international shipping, maybe. Yeah, we've tried them too, and it didn't work. Like it's it's as is stupid little English town. Um, it works for everything else. No, but uh, we FedEx seems to work the best. But I use DHL too. I have Odin 70. And thank you. Thank you. Uh had japan japan's pretty reliable to be honest with you mm-hmm. like I've, I've bought stuff on ebay from japan never had a problem ever hong kong don't do it uh odin 79 on the stream lab side for ten dollars hail when have you uh when you have time take a look at forgotten weapons channel on youtube he just did a video showing that the vikings may have had invented gunpowder about the same time in the chinese sorry but these scandinavian word viking at gear um I like that channel. It's a good. Yeah. The gunpowder thing goes way back and it is like, nobody knows for sure when the gun was invented, they have an idea Mm -hmm. and the gun was originally like a piece of wood that just shot out a projectile, but it goes way, 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 way back. And they're just not sure, but they had other like crazy advanced. They had something called Greek fire, which was like napalm. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to make it today, but it was napalm ish. But you could fire that. They they hollowed out like trees and shot things through them. And this was like back six hundred, like you know, like six hundred years after Christ. Wow. You know, not or it's 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 nuts. It just wasn't uh, to the point that they could like mass produce it and put it on a battlefield. Yep. Uh, Daddy Magic. For five dollars says last August, a fictional novel based on Datlov Pass was released. Oh, yeah, it was written by Will Jordan. We've heard this one. Have you ever heard of him <laughs> on YouTube? I don't know. Up and coming, oh, might be uh, Will Jordan be? I think I've heard of him before, not really sure. 
I didn't know that story was about Detlef Pass. Yeah. Well, it, you I know, he never talked reading. about his damn books. <laughs> so oh. I think he wants to keep the world separate. I, I, and I completely understand that. I for for obvious reasons. Uh, I mean, he gets invited to cons and stuff. Like we get invited to some stuff, but it's every time we do, it is like, okay, this is going to be a bit of a risk. <laughs> you know, we we're like uh, taking a risk here, taking a risk here. Or I talk to people from Hollywood, and they're like, okay, you can't post this on Twitter. Like we can't like <laughs> post selfies on Twitter or something like that like I, all right i get it i get it so dumb though it's, it's dumb. So dumb it's dumb but that's that's the world the world is dumb mm-hmm. the world is dumb uh it, it, a chinese dynasties destroyed a lot of information too they did it's part of human nature i think is once you well, you take over you destroy the stuff that came before because well, you assume you're better than them. Right. The and you want assumption. everybody to believe that there's nothing better than you. So you wipe everything off the face of the earth. Uh, what is that here? The name of the book I'm listening to right now by David Hatcher Childress is Technology of the Gods, The Incredible Sciences of the Ancients. And he just goes through a chronological order. But there is a great base fucking chapter in this where he describes the gun. And and when the gun started, when they were start, when they were able to mass produce the gun, because the gun had been around for five hundred years, three hundred years, something like that, give or take, maybe longer, we don't know. But once they were start to mass produce her, that the quote he uses, it was the fall of kings. Mm. It was the fall of cl- kings, and the rises and, and and republics started to rise because you didn't need a king to protect you, and you could protect yourself from any criminal. Or any drunk soldier that decided to come in and take whatever the hell they wanted. Even the playing field. You didn't have to be skilled in battle. That's a that's an argument for something. Something. Uh, I, I can't think what it is. Number uh, two. I think the yeah. number two has something to do with it. Second. Irrelevant something. these other. days. Yeah. It's a great chapter where he explains, like, just in a very historical format this is what happened this is how why it's necessary why it's necessary to be able to protect yourself and why ev- almost every c- country is trying to take that back away from uh, of course kind of hard to ma- unmake the soup here in america though uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be really hurt. difficult to do that a lot there'll be a lot of accidents on lakes uh okay when, when x-ray girl comes back we'll get the tools going i'll read uh, fixer bob for 20 dollars related to ancient civilizations when you start watching stargate's sg1 i think you'll like daniel jackson archaeologist character my son now wants to watch it with me i watched stargate on vacation it was on tv the HBO. movie yeah the movie i'm not a big fan of the movie you like the movie i like the That's movie okay it's got kurt russell in it i can't i know like i kurt love kurt everything russell. he's in except for death proof uh what well, yeah he was good in it. the uh, movie it seems like bob lazar would have seen it this seems like something bob lazar would have seen in area 51 says alan santos for two dollars talking about the anti-cathera mechanism yeah uh great great bob lazar documentary made by jeremy corbell highly recommend you see it you get an insight into the guy and uh he's the real deal he has no reason to lie. He doesn't write books. He doesn't do seminars. He doesn't accept any money for this. He's got a career. The guy's a genius scientist and uh, makes plenty of money just doing regular old science and doesn't need to talk about this at all ever. But he saw what he saw. He saw what he saw. And he blew the lid off. It. There, remember, there was no Area 51 before Bob Lazar. Nobody knew what the fuck it was. Nobody. Nobody knew about S4, which is where he really worked. Um, and in the documentary, there was one thing. He's like, they they had this palm reading thing. It was like four bars that stuck out like this, and you put your hand over it, and it would read your fingerprints. And everybody thought it was bullshit. Well, they found it. They fucking found it. So, like, like mm-hmm. and then, you know, element uh, 115 he talked about and uh, how the, how, 
when the flying saucer took off, it rotates like this. And there's tons of pictures of freaking flying saucers on their side, including the gimbal footage. Um, and that you look at that gimbal footage and then you look at the, the picture I gave you guys today mm-hmm. and you're like, holy shit. We'll look at that picture I'll later. I'll bring it in. Uh, hey, you should have had Andre Zertus uh, and, and the Wednesday on Wednesday. Zertus. Zertus on the Wednesday ultra crew uh, here on an episode, you both uh, cover similar topics and you even uh, know one of them. Exertus is, uh, is on the list of guests. For sure. yeah. Yes. He's a good dude. Yeah. All right. So we got tools. Tools. Yeah. Tools. So I know uh, you like tools. X-ray girl. Big fan of tools. And many <laughs> types of tools. Uh, but it kind of goes back to how things were made and how, um, you know, when you think about the precision, the measurements, how flat things were in some of the weirdest structures, the dark, how did they do all this stuff? Mm -hmm. And especially in in the sequel, they kind of address this. Um, but the hardness of the things that they're making blocks out of things like granite and these I, they have a scale one to 10, I believe where they rate the hardness, which is about a seven on that scale. What tools did they have back then? Um, and at the time they posited that they had copper tools, which mm-hmm. copper has a hardness of three. Now, you know, logically you're thinking, all right, a harder item would be the thing that you use for the tool to make the other thing. So how do we use copper tools with a hardness of three versus something with a hardness of seven and have the precision and to make these, like even to my right here, these blocks, yeah. how flat they are, how... Uh, perfect they are together like it it's it's insane how people back then wearing loincloths carrying these huge blocks can hunter make gatherers. something like this hunter gatherers yeah and people still had to make those tools by the way you had to be pretty advanced like the metallurgy was a, it's still an advanced thing that not everybody had access to not everybody like even even prior to iron ore right before before they started making iron weapons they found iron weapons you know how meteors tutankhamun was buried with a with an iron dagger i believe and they think it was from a meteor so you could occasionally get it from a meteor but now they're finding more and more iron so they're thinking that it might go back a little further and it's just the elite of the elite knew how to do it um it is pretty interesting now it is possible to chop stone with uh with copper somewhat but not what they mentioned in the documentary is nowhere near that precision there is precision where the guy catches himself at one point in the first documentary where they're in that cave in india and you can see your reflection man it is highly polished it's better than our technology some we can't do it today (laughs) <laughs> okay, we can't do it today. It's so precise. It's highly polished. And he goes, it's like they did it with lasers. But of course they didn't have lasers. They didn't have lasers no, back then. Not saying they had lasers back then. <laughs> this is that. This look is at the caves that. in India. Like, look at that thing. Amazing. Amazing. And like the efficiency on like a copper tool. I think that's the general idea of how they, they did yeah, some of this with copper efficiency. tools. And like they would hit it four or five times before they had to send it back to get that specific, uh, specific, uh, I can't yeah. speak specific tool to be re forged. So they'd have like a multiple of them supposedly is their idea. And they would be like, tick, 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 tick. All right. This doesn't work anymore. Get the next one. Tick, 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 tick. And the efficiency on that is so low. It is so low. It and would, that, that's impossible. Takes so long. For one, you'd have to be making copper tools all the fucking time. Exactly. It would yeah. Ever. It would take you hundreds of years to do stuff. Uh, now, now, when the technology goes, we're talking about the precise stuff. I'm not talking about, like, the crap. No offense, ancient people, but some of it was crap. You made some crap, okay. Uh, but you made some crap, okay? You did. Look at that. The ceiling um, is, like, then, perfect. I, I, I want them to make a special, like, it sounds such like a boring, mundane thing, but I want them to do a special. I want Graham to do a special on the plumbing on ancient plumbing 
because <laughs> in some parts it was so a, a brilliant and, and Roman plumbing, quite frankly, was better than a lot of the European plumbing, which didn't exist for a long time, you know? Uh, so yeah, why would you, okay. So the, the, the theory behind these caves is to get out of the monsoon. Unless of course it's a flood, but okay. My thing is like, if that is the reasoning, wouldn't you just make like a, a basic cave why would you make it a very super precise polished down and each one has a different harmonic resonance if it's just to get away from the monsoons i mean that'd be a good tornado shelter mm -hmm. but then again just just dig out a hole you could do that that wouldn't take as much work as but what I they have going on here too much work. I want you to think about this we have all those tunnels in turkey a lot of people a lot of tunneling a lot of tunneling could it be that a bunch of comets rained down hell on Earth for now? What Randall's talking about is it in a prolonged period of time. I think even Graham has yeah. talked about this. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but it's over a period of maybe 20 some odd years, yeah, maybe like more. A long time. This shit rained down on people. And uh, imagine like, you're about 10 years in. You're getting used to it, right? <laughs> you're like, like, oh, there comes like, the metal. Right, hey, uh, we're looking at our uh, <laughs> our mechanisms and our temples that are looking at the skies, and it looks like it's probably going to be coming back around, so let's get back in. Absolutely traumatize everybody for a long period of time. The kind of trauma that they're even talking about is hereditary. Is hereditary trauma. And that's why we are this species with amnesia. It's a way of us dealing with this horrific. And there might still be stuff like, just like there's instincts with animals. Like there's certain, uh, oh my God, what was the, I'm going to get this wrong. So forgive me. But there's certain cats that are scared of just any kind of dog, like a big fucking cat. Even if it's a big cat, it'll be scared of a little dog. Right. Uh, and that's instinctual. The, the big cat could eat the little dog. But there's certain instances where that's happened. So even that's a bad example because I'm not sure of the science on that. But this well, they, they've done they've done studies with mice where yeah. they they have some mice like a control group and then they scare certain mice and then they will have those mice that they scared have babies and then they'll test them again and they'll find that the babies without being exposed to whatever they were scared by are also scared like scared by the same thing by the that's same the exact thing effects. So okay. that's what uh Vilikovsky had gotten into cuz that's where Graham got a lot of the stuff and you know I've got a Vil I haven't read Vilikovsky's books I plan to they're very dry they're very 1950s <laughs> but uh, I will read them I have first prints of them all um and uh and, and, he, and he talks about this, 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 that th there's a trauma that even runs through us today mm. that would be very understandable if, if our ancestors had to live through a thousand years of hell. Cause it wasn't just the rocks raining down. It was all the effects afterwards, the flood, the oceans going up 400 yeah. feet and changing the, the landscape of the world and the fires and the dying out of all their game. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. That is really cool. I want to, that is so cool. Go to an Indian. I would love to go to India, but yeah, I'm also scared. It's a lot like, uh, Petra, you know, it does. It does. Very, very, very similar. Eerily similar. Do they have churches like, I think it's in Ethiopia where they're just dug into the ground. Oh, that's cool. Took them out of the bedrock. Bedrock. It's pretty crazy. But this yeah. cave, like, the, like until I saw this documentary, did not know about these. I didn't all. know about these. I think they're the coolest all. things in the world right now. I want to go visit them. Go inside. I want to touch the wall. Yeah. And like something to kind of add on top of that is they obviously didn't make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you'd have to dig a new one. Um, but the corners, having that precision to do those cornering work with copper tools how, how do you how do you do that how do you do that that's a good question in the dark 
in the dark. We lost so in much the dark. Uh, knowledge and advanced tech. Yeah, Mr. B Mr. Bills. Look at that doorway. Uh, it's so perfect. Single mail. It it is, and like we are scratching the surface. So what archaeologists know is like a percent, maybe. Barely. We don't know. It probably. Baffles me, man. It's so weird. Kanung, kanung that they t they talk about Th that's the pyramid that if we can really do some serious ex ex excavation on it that's the one that goes back twenty thousand years and it's an earthen pyramid that's been built uh they, they go into it in uh, uh in ancient apocalypse and and it's mentioned in magicians of the gods uh yeah that one i mean it predates everything everything hey look at that there's just a little doorway that's amazing that they found a huge exactly piece rock. of rock like that to do that and with. There's rocks that look like this in uh, <clears throat> in Arizona. We'll drive through them uh, outside of uh, Tucson and Benson. Yeah, like right yeah. when you come in over the uh, the New Mexico border, and there's that weird gas station with uh, the thing, right? And it looks like you're going through Rohan, and then you'll hit this, and uh, it's it's just all these crazy rocks that look stacked up. Like uh, somebody knocked them all over. It's really bizarre. It's really cool. Yeah, it looks a little like Joshua Tree too. You got uh, I didn't. I bouldered in Joshua Tree. It's pretty fun. Oh, the you burning of the books. <laughs> yeah, that yep. section of the documentary. Yeah. We just like to destroy things. Um, Look at that. And and for people That's who so sad. <laughs> want <laughs> to have an idea of how hard the andesite is, it's as hard as modern steel. Yeah, that's a hard rock. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. How do you use copper on steel? Maybe uh, they knew how to do s something else, something a little different. Maybe. That would be my guess. I mean, like uh, Adam, back however many weeks ago, he he said that sound frequencies could be a thing. I, I don't know. Who knows? We know they can break things. It, mm -hmm. it can break things, mm -hmm. absolutely. So and there's the walls of Jericho, you know, the trumpets that brought down the walls of Jericho. And uh, a, a line at the beginning of that second doc that like really stayed with me is a uh, the absence of evidence means that the tools didn't exist as per modern science. Right. Think about it because we don't have the evidence; it didn't exist. Like oh well, mm, it had okay. to have been done by the things that we know of. Mm -hmm. It's the only explanation. So, things to think about and like with history it's just all about asking the right questions so it is and and the ancient civilization debate somebody brought up conan which is interesting because robert e howard was into that stuff mm -hmm. and so was hp lovecraft it's set and, during like the after the younger dryas like before and, like it, before recorded history all that time period. There's a, there was a very popular Atlantis book. Uh, there was a guy who became a politician just so he could have access to a library to write an Atlantis book uh, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I believe. And uh, it just pops up every once in a while. Every once, you know, every 10, 20 years, the subject pops up and it doesn't go away. And then some comes along Graham and, and Randall, who are two just like equally obsessed people. I mean, Randall and, and Graham must have very understanding wives. Just saying. Uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Speaking of Conan books. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, you got oh, it! Yeah. Fixing The Siege nice. of the Black Citadel. It's one of those books with no pictures. Conan books. Words in it. Got them Thanks, words. Chuck, you gotta read. Chuck, Chuck Dixon .com if you want to get it. Chuck Dixon's a legend, by the way. Uh, and I just purchased uh, the second appearance of Conan and Weird Ta Weird Tales. You and I need to go to the Robert E. Howard Museum. Yes, like yes. soon. I'd love to go see that. Yep, Which one of those man's time? men. You know, that's right. Salt of the earth writers. We need more of those. Yes, we do. Okay, we got uh, Rob Robinson for $20. I'm a normie when it comes to these ideas and these theories, but I see a video where spec ops soldiers encountered a Gaijin, and it was not phased by their weapons. 
Uh, I know there's one where they encountered a giant in Afghanistan. That one's been going around for a while. How giant is this giant? Uh, 10 feet. Dang. Maybe, maybe taller. Uh, Mark Gudetti for, and we're going to talk about giants soon. That's going to be a show coming a up. Very, very, yeah. Oh, I could go for hours on that one. Like on this one, hours and hours. Got to get Jim Vieira on or the guys from uh, megalithomania, either one or both. Uh, no, who is need to explain pre flood flood megalithic structures like Gobekli Tepe. Once you think about the mammoths and the mastodons or be suburban, no different from elephants today, except two times the size. Uh, I totally agree. I don't think it's woo at all. I don't think it's woo at all. Uh, Gobekli Tepe is a fact. It is a fact. So now it's it's when they accept that they have to start dating other things like Malta. They say Malta's the it was the oldest until Gobekli Tepe. I think Malta is the same age, maybe a thousand years apart, if that. But I think it's the same age. Uh, you know, I remember we're going to Stonehenge and I can't wait for you guys to go to Stonehenge. I wish you could go up and touch them, you know, you can, yeah. if you pay enough. Yeah. You can go to the, pre I get why they, why you can't, Druid, the hippies, and stuff on whatever them. fucking tour and you can go in there. Um, but there's a big sign. They might've changed it, but this was 20 years ago when I saw it, there's a big sign that basically says, we don't know how this happened. We don't know where they got this. We don't know when they did this. So like, uh, we think it's 5,000 years old based on some wood, but we don't know because it wasn't really connected to the stone. So uh, don't know. We just don't, don't know. know. I have a feeling it's a lot older than 5,000 years. Just saying. Just I can't wait to go saying. see it. The Mountain King for 20 British pounds. That's proper money. Hi, first time Super Chat here. Ooh. Yeah. Gary, I heard you've been to Silbury Silbury Hill. I have. I have. Uh, did you go to the Longboro access from it? I've been there so many times. There's loads more around the area. You want to hear about uh, some of them? Yeah, I do. And I didn't. I was there for like an hour. Our tour bus let us sit there for an hour. And I remember I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I was sitting on that hill. And there's like these two little British kids playing. And it sounded like Pink Floyd the Wall. Mommy, look, there's an airplane up in the sky. You know, <laughs> you're like waiting for the music little, to start. Look, British kids playing with their little British accents. It was like gorgeous day. Yeah, it was awesome. Saw crop circles too. Oh. Yeah, I mean it was hard to see them, but we got on a hill and oh, we okay. saw them. Yeah, we saw some yeah. legit crop circles, whether they were man-made or whatever. Don't know, but uh, I saw them. I can't wait to go to England, man. Oh, yeah. You get in a little bus, right? They take you in a little little bus and you, you hit a couple of pubs for food. Um, pack your own food because the food sucks. Um, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the beer's warm and all that shit. And then uh, they drink warm beer. Why are you guys drinking warm beer? That's I weird, don't fucking man. know. It's weird. But man, their shit's warm. I can understand Guinness because it's like a it's like not even a beer. It's like a whole meal. It's a meal. Yeah. Regular beer, I don't know. Warm. Even you don't believe Vietnamese, in ice. Vietnamese like, put ice in their beer. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> Gary's face. It, it's hot in that country. You need to put ice in the beer, otherwise it gets lukewarm real quick. Look, I'm all about that ice cubes, you know? Make tea cold. Make water cold. I'm all about refrigeration. Cold. Modern refrigeration. refrigeration. <laughs> yeah, it's a really yes. important thing. <laughs> Some people don't believe in it, but when know. there's a heat, this was 20 years ago. So again, things could have changed. But when there was a heat, we were there was a heat wave in London in 2003 where we went. So it was like 95 when I was there. I was running around London with shorts on. The Thames, the Thames River smelled like a fucking oh, sewer. That's so <laughs> oh, that's hot. It's hot, but it's I like moist it. there too, right? Oh. They have humidity. No, no, is it was, humidity it was there? fine. It was like a normal heat. Uh, but yeah, I just ran around the city. 
I was by myself for most of it because Melissa was at uh, training at Vidal Sassoon or doing, putting on classes. Uh, so Mar House for four ninety nine. We need a billionaire Mr. Whitmore from Disney's Atlantis to bankroll these types of <laughs> architectural searches. Universities are the main source now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Elon, Elon's in the Graham Hancock. So I also think that he's focused becomes... on getting to the moon and mars and stuff yeah so I'm like, if this becomes mainstream it could end up being kind of like the iron age type of stuff where maybe there's the kickstarters and indiegogos to help fund well, that's a great like idea I don't, i'm surprised that they haven't tried that i cannot believe nobody's done a documentary about randall how has yeah. nobody done a documentary with randall like all of his Netflix, like, come on. Yeah, Netflix, like crowdfund this shit. We, you know, for yeah. one, we, we talked about it for ancient uh apocalypse. For what Randall describes, the the, the flood over the scab lands. I want to see like uh a, a, a I want to see some CGI of this. I want I want somebody <laughs> to to put this to film. I want to yes. see it. I want to see his interpretation of it. Um they do a little bit of it in Ancient Apocalypse, but I want, I, I can't believe somebody's not done a documentary on Randall. How's Maybe one day, think about it, Forbidden Frontiers features Randall. Presents. Oh. Presents. More. All the <laughs> oh. Randall, Randall, you can handle. All the Randall, you can handle. <laughs> That's the channel. Fire from the sky. Yeah. Maybe uh, one day, if this show gets big enough, that'd be awesome. Dude, he did a he did a multi part special on fires that will freak your shit out, <laughs> like big fires, like the Chicago fire and a huge fire in Minnesota, uh, and a huge one in Wisconsin. It's a New York City fire during World War One or World War Two. Yeah, they tend I think to it's World War Two. But a lot of these fires happened right around the same time. So he was alluding to the fact that it that what might have caused them came from the sky. Oh. I mean, it's I mean, it's totally logical. What if a little meteor comes down during summer and just starts fire? But he was Breaks up. saying something bigger. Uh so uh quantum sledgehammer for 1059 thank you uh gary thanks for turning me on to the gem that is randall carlson been watching his podcast series now on atlantis and the younger dryas on youtube he's so compelling love it hail forbidden frontier hail to you some of the best shit on youtube period his podcast uh yeah and, and everybody on it brothers of the serpent they're all good they're all really good uh torchwood gal hey what's up I don't want to bring back Torchwood without Captain Jack. Just don't do it for five bucks. Uh, a new social construct created in the past 40 years. More people looking down more at phones for the likes than looking up at the skies for questions. Yep. Yep. True. <clears throat> uh, Graham talked about that on one of his Joe Rogan interviews. He uh, talks about uh, the canopy they put over Gobek Gobekli Tepe. And then they went into a conversation about living in cities. And it does suck not being able to see the stars mm -hmm. you know because it really just gives you perspective you know what i i went on top of the on, on the big island i went on top of the volcano and uh saw more stars than i've ever seen in my life uh you can also if you're in the dark uh mm -hmm. in the desert in california you could see more stars than you've ever seen in your life it's it's nuts my uh favorite trip i ever took was to patagonia in argentina and the lack of lights it's insane mm -hmm. what yeah. a difference it is to get outside the city and experience the world and we've blinded ourselves you to brought that. up Something... patagonia patagonia is where there is a documented encounter with giant people what yes it's, a, it's just me it was, uh, <laughs> it was um uh it was french italian spanish not can't remember what country they were from but colonizers yeah. Uh, oh. the colonizers found some eight, uh, seven foot woman, eight foot, nine foot man. Wow. Lots of stories. There were stories about the American Indians also that there were giants yep. amongst them. So, 
uh, Chris W. for 1999. I'm still blown away that one of my favorite pop culture commentators is also immersed in all the lost civilization lore, and I love it so much. Man crush on Gary. No, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. XOXO, especially with the XO at the end. Let's come on. This isn't hugs. <laughs> It's okay. Okay, come on. Uh, I am a complete noob in this stuff, but I saw a Tucker Carlson interview where he mentioned aliens being attracted to nuclear energy. Yeah, that one is the most compelling of all of the UFO stories. Is the aliens buzzing nuclear silos? There's oh, so yeah, many. that story. Yeah, there, there's multiple stories that happened in Russia too. So you have cooperation in Russia. So they were completely aware of the Cold War. They were completely aware we were about to kill ourselves. And they were doing uh, stuff like... What are these monkeys doing? They were turning them on and off. And it's not just one weird story. It is legit. For one, let me finish this and I'll get it. it. You got me thinking about why our government is so against it. It makes no sense to me otherwise. Well... A, a government power does not want to admit that there's something more powerful than them. I think it's just as simple as that. Uh, Chris R. on the Streamlabs side for $10. But the people who have to work in silos aren't just fucking blokes that you hire off the street. These people have to pass psychological exams. These people have to pass multiple ser uh, security clearances. This is best of the best, most mentally strong men you can find. Because ultimately, when they are told you have to press that fucking button and kill millions of people, they got to do it. Yeah. They got to be able to follow orders. But um, in war games, they have the, in the movie, they have the test. And the one guy who doesn't want to do it and the guy has to pull a gun on him. Mm. You know, like that's it's serious shit. So when these people, when the people who work in these silos are coming up for when they're not even supposed to really talk about working in silos, they, it, you have to be way past it, right? Um, are coming out and saying, yeah, this shit happened. You got to take it seriously. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of stories from very reputable people like that fighter pilots, uh, technicians like this. It's like, uh, there's something there. You have to look at it in, in not a woo woo way. Cause there's people that not, that aren't just people walking around the street going, Oh, the sky is falling aliens. These are like trustworthy people that don't have a reason. There's no reason for them to say these things. They're actually, when they say them, they get ostracized or thought that they're crazy. So yeah, there's something there. Connor Part uh, Partington for five dollars says hashtag Krigler, Krigler lives matter. They do. They do. Yes, they do. Crash, 6674 for $20. Just saw the Megalith filmed up in Sage Mountain, Montana. Same style of uh, sa uh, as Sexy Woman. Sexy Woman. Uh, oh. Horde Rock with nubs. There, so there's nubs on them. Holy shit. Where? Whole fight is massive. This is Montana. And Montana. has been absolutely shit-wrecked. Interesting seeing uh, in NA Channel uh name wandering wolf okay well i'll check out the wandering wolf I'm, i might have to go up there montana is far away where's montana it's north very it's a beautiful very place north. to go just out of you place oh if i drive to like vancouver i'd have to drive i think through montana there you go yes hayden nips nubs nips nips, nips. nips. nips and nubs hard nips Uncharted X latest video showed a nub on the in the bedrock. I've never seen that. So it's in the um Sphinx uh the Sphinx Temple. And he gets in there and I again I see stuff I haven't seen before where they 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 put down tile basically. And it's not just tile, it's like a puzzle piece. So they would dig uh something in the ground that would fit the tile over so it'd be flat. But that then there's nubs coming off the bedrock like there are on that rock. So they couldn't have been to lift things. What were those effing nubs? What are the nipples? What are they for? Because they're yeah. everywhere across the globe. What are they for? Everywhere. Aesthetic. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, don't really talking you, but were are you able to uh look up John Hutchinson, John F for ten dollars? Not yet. What's there to look up again with him? I have it in my notes and I forgot. That's why I write my notes. 
Uh, I found the video. Is it earlier in the video or later in the video, the Uncharted X? It's, uh, mm. I think I found it. Look for a nub. Okay, I'll have to get back to that because I found I just found it. I'll look it up, John. Thank you. You're not bugging. Definitely not uh, Tony Hawk for five dollars. <laughs> First guess has to be Jennifer Lawrence. She is. Uh, she has set to the path for guest everywhere oh yeah oh okay. <laughs> she created the show she's definitely so, the first guest course. obviously obviously brent wolf for 20 dollars really good no nonsense channels uh to see someone using accident uh the way uh ways to do stuff is primitive technology one of the og youtube channels doing practical ancient building techniques hmm. nothing's an accident they didn't just accidentally wake up and went I'm going to carve in relief today and uh, invent abstract art. Okay. It's too many coincidences. Let's figure it out. I think I found, I found it here. Mm -hmm. Thank you to the guy that's, that said six minutes in. I forgot what your name was. I'm sorry, but you did help me out right there. Yeah. It's a little nip the right there. In, in, what what is the that for? Head rock. What's it doing there? Watch this video, by the way, after this. Uncharted X. Uncharted X. All right, I'll yeah. check it out. Looks like a I've only well, too. I think I remember last show you guys talked about nubs. No. Nub nub. Curious. Nub nub. Nub nub. Yep yep nub 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 nub. Sphinx poop makes sense. Oh. Uh, solved it. Patio four. Furniture. Why did I say four? Fornicator. I just want to say fornicator for some reason. Oh my god. Uh, patio fornicator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the patio. Uh, the ex if the existential fear of extinct it's the if the existential fear of extinctions, disaster cycles, etc., starts getting to you, it helps to remember we're all descendants of survivors. We are. Yeah. Good point. And we started life as winners. I, I'm more fascinated by Number it. I'm one. not free. I like, you know, sure, hearing that you're going to get frozen and burnt to death is a little freaky to hear, but I read that stuff because I'm fascinated about it. I'm not really worried about it. Like, because the, the giant rock is coming and we're all going to die. There ain't mm -hmm. shit I can do about it. Yep. <laughs> just just live life it. as best as you can. Yep. Exactly. Uh, my Lord Grand Darth Starweaver for five dollars says change of topic to save comics all must go back to where they were in the 70s and before. I agree. I agree. I like they the 80s, cheaper, too. 80s comics are good. Cheaper. They need to be cheaper and more consistent. And the art and story have to be good. It's a pretty simple formula. Um, I talked when Chuck was on, I said, you know, those nightfall reprints. When Nightfall was happening, people weren't in love with it, okay? They didn't like the new Batman costume. They didn't like Batman had his back broken. There was people who were just not sure because, you know, comic fans, they like their Batman. They don't like change. But as time went on, people went to understand the story, especially, like, bringing Batman the way they brought Batman back. But when they reprinted those things, when DC reprinted those things in beautiful color, that was the original color from the comic books, they were nice, thick binding. It fit really nice on your shelf. And it was cheap. Those things sold like crazy. Like crazy. And they still sell today. They still sell today. They just need to figure it out. Uh, the problem is they've reset their universes too much. And I can get into it. But uh, How many times now since New 52? It's like three times already? Three or four times now. Lost count. What is wrong with you? Wow. And, uh, but there's never been, uh, until recently... A really like cheap way to get people caught up in the stories and they thought digital would be the answer and it wasn't uh jabber j for 49.99 hey i love the show i bought two tickets to the galaxy summit nashville awesome unfortunately my friend who was going with me had to cancel out if you are interested i will donate the ticket to your attendance on or maybe let me sit in on the fnt show uh the night before there you go we will talk about it. Yeah, we'll we can we can maybe you can find uh, another you know fellow audience member to give it to if they can make yeah. it out. 
I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, best time is now for ten dollars. I don't know how we're going to work out Friday night tags. I haven't even given that thought, but I can probably run it if need be. Yeah, I mean, we'll just do it from our hotel room. Yeah, yeah. we've done that before. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the trial and error for these caves in India. Only perfect final versions. That's just insane. Who does ever does something perfect from the start? Says best time is now for ten dollars. You're absolutely right, and they mentioned that. And the same goes for the Antikythera mechanism. Same thing goes for the fucking pyramids. Yeah. You know, yeah, sure. They say there's other pyramids that are older. I don't agree with that. I think the Giza pyramids are the oldest and they're the best. It's caves of Barabar. Go back, Lee Tappy. The oldest wondering. stuff is the best. Again, they just woke up and said, I want to do. Okay. Hear me out. <clears throat> I want to be the very best. I know we no were going to go whatever like, was. We were going to go hunt some mastodon or whatever. It's just me and you. <laughs> I really feel the inspiration to carve a T, but the T is going to represent a human head. And I want right. to have, and I want, they have to be 16 tons, about 20 feet. I know we haven't invented feet yet, but that's how tall they're going to be. And then I want them to have hands across, you know, ending at the navel, right? Right above the mm -hmm. jump. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put a letter called an H in the middle of it. Because I'm inventing it right now, it's the shape of an H. So uh -huh. making, making a symbol. Right. It'll, be, it'll be a symbol, um, and it's a total coincidence that those arms coming together above the navel are going to be just like some other statues that are going to be built, according to archaeologists, built, carved a thousands of years later on the most remote island on the planet. Cool. Wow. Let's go. Coincidence. It's. it's do you mind if I if I stop hunting and gathering to do that? Yeah. Cool. I'm not going to hunt. Okay, can you gather? No. no I'm not going to have time. I'm going to be re I'm gonna very focused. Building. I'm a builder now. Can we eat this rock? No. Can we live under this rock? No. Can we sleep no. under this rock? No. Will it help us hunt? Can we kill things with the rock? No. It just stands there. It just stands there? Why? Because I wanted to. It's my artistic expression. You're going to starve to death. I don't care. Hashtag worth it. Yeah. It makes no damn sense. Like the, it makes no sense. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I'm sorry for four ninety nine British pounds. I went to Stonehenge recently. Uh, the mounds around it seem interesting. Also, a new discovery was found near Woodhenge, indicating ancient civilizations. Yes. Oh. They, they, uh, Woodhenge. The whole area is massive. Massive. Woodhenge. So, you know what's funny? Woodhenge is like it's right next to like a sheep field in a town you expect it to be like on its own out in the well no there's roads there's house there's a road like right there yeah there's a house mm -hmm. down the street you know it's it's pretty pretty weird and the yeah, fact you guys that, in your old countries you're like ah eh, whatever right what is this five thousand years old? <laughs> young <laughs> rebirth thunder for 1999 you should do an episode that covers the old 1999 sorry three birth under it uh, covers the old testament and ancient civilizations not to argue about dates but just civilizations well the old testament has a lot of documentation there's a lot of uh recent discoveries too that are like proving stories in the in the old testament mm -hmm. like even the existence of civilizations that were said to be there that they just thought were oh this is like a this is a story that they're just telling uh no they're actually there those those civilizations actually were there uh, it's very interesting how how much of that is proven to be true now it would be a fun episode to go down and kind of go through some very some very well-known stories from the old testament that have been proven true through evidence mm -hmm. like scientific and archaeological evidence that'd be cool Okay. More and more all the time that we're just, you know, we're just thought to be uh, a myths and they're finding out that they weren't and that's becoming problematic for them. Yeah, really uh, clip problematic. 3188 for 999. I always wonder if the major mines of metal deposits are the remains of previous civilizations. Metropolis is like if LA and N NYC were collapsed today and to be discovered as metal mines in thousands of years, maybe. 
Millions of years can do, I would say that would have to be millions of millions, years. Millions, yeah. Because if it's thousands, you would see remnants of a lot of different things that would show but there were civilizations. You know, there are copper mines like all over America, like all over. They were ancient. So, uh, was there trade? Yes, there was. Scott Sherrington for five Australian dollars. Archaeologists choose to ignore the fact that steel will rust away in just years while copper and bronze and precious metals also last almost infinitely like, like gold. That's why they like gold. It's malleable. It's not the best weapon, but man, it was useful for a lot of other things. That's why we still find it because yep. it doesn't rust away. Hayden 75 for $20 camp. Wait to meet you guys in Vegas. Been a long time since I took the trip. So this seemed like the opportunity to take. Girlfriend and I have our tickets to Chrissy's show too. Nice. So it's, an awesome week. it's going to be an awesome week. I it is it. going to be amazing. Um, They're not getting sick. Nope. I love just walking around Vegas. A good time. That went to, you were sick. I think so. I get my ass grabbed every time. Every time I go. By who? Just oh. ladies on the street. Ladies on the street. Yeah. They're trying to take pictures with you. They're just like... Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. You know, like the flamingo ladies. What are they called? Well, you didn't have your wife with you. When you have your wife with you, they leave you alone. Really? Okay, good. Yeah, they do. I think my wife's coming this time. So. There you go. <gasps> yeah. I'm excited. She can take care of me when I get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be preferable. Um, no, we had a good time. Like, it was just me, Ryan, and Steph, and I can't remember who else was there. Sorry. We just live streamed walking down the street, walking through hotels. I don't even know directions. That's so fun. Just go. Yeah. And, uh, Ash Ray for 10 Canadian pesos. Gary, I have the photos of the 12th century temple I visited in India a while ago. Oh. Carvings will blow your mind. Where can I send them? Gary at neurotic.com. Love to see them. Please. Uh, so cool. Alice, Texas Peter on the Streamlab side for $5. Uh, they just had those massive turkey quakes. I'd like to know if the underground cities were uh, harmed in any way. They were built thousands of years ago, and I believe they were still stable and unharmed, but the current or past major quakes, blood trail. Um, Gobekli Tepe wasn't affected. I know that because I checked. Oh. That's scary, um, too, just natural. Those are just fine. Uh, but those those earthquakes were insane. Like, how uh, large of earthquakes? Do you know? Uh, that's, like, almost. Have you seen you know, the world? Like, just point eight. Split? Oh my god, that's huge! They have like new Grand Canyons over there. It's yeah, it's crazy. It was insane how bad wow. those earthquakes were, and there was bunches of them. And then there was a lot of like, there was a U.S. ship that pulled in the harbor and harp and whatever. Um, there were. Like, we're seeing lightning in the streets. Yeah, those transformers blowing up. But there is, there is volcano lights. That is a real thing. Volcano lights? Okay, uh, not volcano, sorry. Earthquake lights. Earthquake lights. What's so that? Happen right before or during an earthquake, it's a, it's a distortion in the sky. It's basically like a, like a. Uh, a luminous aerial yeah. phenomenon that appears yeah. in the sky or near yeah. areas of tectonic what stress. What they believe it is, is it like there's so much energy going on with an earthquake that it you know messes it's with the magnetic field and creates a distortion which is i could totally buy that i mean if you're okay. talking about two pieces of crust breaking or slipping or that's a lot of energy that's a lot of just energy uh, that that's fucking it's I'll, I'll never forget the the day before i left san diego there's a fucking earthquake and i was about this is the first time in my life I've been two two miles from the epicenter. Wow. So it was like a 4.5. But when you're two miles from the epicenter, and it was really shallow. And I heard it. Hmm. And it, and it just sounded like it's creepy. There, there's the crust was on this and it just fell on something. So it goes boom. <laughs> and then the the wave comes towards you. So the sound waves could, and I like felt ever I felt it go under me. I was like, "Whoa, I've never been that close." To, I mean, I've felt earthquakes before, and it feels like you're going over a conveyor belt, kind of. But this one was just a thud, a big old wow. thud. 
Is that Chris Gore in the chat? Is that real Chris Gore? Chris Gore? Is there is there a fake Chris Gore? I don't know. There might be. I don't know. You know. Chris Gore is that He's you? Such a handsome dude. People want to be him. Yep. Yeah. You're gonna be in Vegas, right? What's up, Chris you Gore? Are. Chris Gore. Yeah, he is. He's got his documentary coming out that week too. Of all the fucking weeks. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, can't wait to see it. Uh, have you heard of the Die Hold Foundation? No. They're on YouTube. The guy has 30 minute videos, claims to have found where Moses split the rock for water and tracks ancient civilization. Seems to go with what you guys think here. I will check it out. Very interesting. Uh, Ginger Adventure for $10 went to uh, where? Ephesus. Uh, Ephesus which has a port city uh, house of Virgin Mary also has a giant uh, ancient library with a brothel underneath. That's what I'm talking about. Read the <laughs> nice. books. Get, um, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, now miles. Whoa. Now miles from water. Who knows what happened? And it was a port city. So it used to be a port city and it's now miles from water that. I, yeah. Th there's a port city in India that was, mi that's now miles from water too. It's yeah. Who knows? I remember being able to pick up those books in that castle I was in in Sicily. That was 800 years. It was just 800 years old, but I hit there was like, That's what I'm talking about. They're just like they eh. 800 year old shit laying around that you could just fucking pick up because I, you know, so we, you can rent it's a uh, Castle Falcone. You can rent it. Oh, cool. Uh, one of Melissa's, one, uh, the, the godparents of our uh, Logan, um, her daughter was getting married. And they're very rich Ukrainian family, <laughs> and uh, they rented the 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 castle and flew us out so Melissa could do the hair and to, so we could be at the wedding and it was a great wedding. And I don't usually don't like them, but yeah, like I stayed in a effing. I did live streams from the castle. I did castle live streams. That's cool. <gasps> and the stuff I'm surrounded by is like hundreds of years old, so I'm like being really careful. I did break a vase. That's why I'm saying when we go to Harry. the UK, go to the UK, we should Airbnb a castle. Just saying, we, need we to have be enough in a castle. Have swords. I offered to pay for it. No, forget about it. It's fine. Forget about it. Hey, <laughs> eat some, eat some food. Come have on, some get pizza. Over here. Get, up, get over here. Uh, TJ Rowe for five dollars. I believe Patagonia means land of giants. I believe so too. Beautiful place. Gray soul for twenty dollars. I can't wait. To see y'all in Vegas again, three years running. Let's go. Gotta hook yeah. up with uh, a good. Uh, gotta hook you up with a good drink, quarterback Gary. Yeah, preferably <laughs> one that isn't like have a roofie in it. Yeah, yeah. Just don't don't okay. roofie me, man. Gary needs to be standing by the end of the night, please. Not yeah. making that out with a, with a mask of ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put him right there. I brought my buddy with me. Oh my god! Me every day. He's literally behind you. <laughs> Uh, that is hilarious. Uh, Dark Matter NC for five dollars. Gary just wanted to say thank you for all you do. Thank you, thank you for supporting us. Really, I'm the one who needs to be thanking you. You're one of the leading forces in keeping what we love alive. That's a lot of pressure. No, I'm just I, thank you. <laughs> I'm doing my best, but there's so many of us out there though that are like fighting the good fight, like Chris Gore, out there, quarter black. X-ray girl's fighting hard. She doesn't know half the shit she's talking about. <laughs> I'm, <just kidding. laughs> I'm still well, She's learning. doing the work. She's you know doing what? the work. You know what? There is so the much to catch up on, okay? There is. There is. Literally there is. years before I was even born. There's stuff She's to catch doing up doing the work, on. and I appreciate that. <laughs> we got to get our Vegas prep movie list ready. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Hangover. <laughs> hangover dodgeball. Hangover dodgeball. Just keep those in your brain. Watch those. That And then you're in loathing. 11, but you have to watch the classic first. Ocean's classic. 11. Classic. Ocean's classic. 11. There's two versions. They're both great. You got to watch oh. the original and the remake. The sequels and all that stuff. Oh. Original and remake. Okay. Both fantastic movies. Third one's good. I like the second one. Third one is also good. The third one is better than the second one. The third one is better than the second. I've okay. only watched the second one in a trilogy marathon, so it it works better in that scenario because yeah, you're going right back to, to be in Vegas. Traditional. It's just yeah, there's something about it. Movie. It doesn't it's work when it's not. I like it though. 
Okay. Like even Con Air, I would consider a Vegas movie, even though the very end happens. That's true. I will watch it on the way. What about uh, Honey? I Honey, I blew up the kid. It's a Vegas movie. Mm, that is a Vegas. <laughs> I blew up a kid. Yeah, yeah it's Honey. I shrunk the kids. Austin sequel Powers, they, where they blew the kid up. They, they have a, of... a sequel. Yeah, you there's, know there's Vegas and Austin Powers, so you can. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Austin Powers as well. That's a man, baby. Joker. Casino. <laughs> Oh, of course, casino. Of course. of course, that's without a doubt. The list is growing. Not leaving Las Vegas, though. That's fucking depressing. You want to do fun, happy Vegas movies? Yes. Uh, I'll have a full list for you. Yes. I predict quarter. Oh wait, uh, Smoke and Aces, right? That's Smoke in Vegas. and Aces. Yes, that's I love that fantastic movie. Fantastic movie. Chris Fan. Pine, yeah. early Chris Pine movie. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Oh, Ryan, like Reynolds. Like Ryan Reynolds. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Chris Pine. He's good in it too. Uh, Chris Pine's in movie. it. Alicia Keys. Yeah. I need to. You won't watch notice this. him though. Chris Pine is in it, but you're not going to notice. Him. What Ray year Lakota. was this? It's called Smoke and Aces. It's a freaking great movie. Twenty. Twenty ten. Uh, two thousand and six. Yep. Yeah. That's when oh, I discovered even earlier. Chris wow. Pine. No, you will recognize. Like that cast is incredible. Okay. Okay. It's on the list. It's on. I'm putting it on right now. Wow, 2006. Yep. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. I think I was too young for that movie. Jeremy That's Piven. Jeremy Piven. Piven. He was so That's good in that movie character. too. Yeah. Yeah. Coked out. You know, it's very, very accurate to his character. <laughs> Jeremy Piven, famously a dick, like a massive dick. He kind of seems like one. Yeah. Uh, I predict Quarter Black will have his 18th child nine months after Vegas. Uh, Channel Surf in oh 1999. I will not bet you on that because I, I agree. Don't, like, don't Cor, put me. Cor Black's don't working on the third string of his basketball team. Okay. <laughs> Four is enough. Okay. You hear him enough in the background. I can't do any more than that. Yeah, me and Chris were kind of talking like, how in the hell could Shad and Quarter Black like Dungeons and Dragons? I'm like, well, you know, they both have basketball teams for kids. So uh, <laughs> you got to understand. I thought it was fun. Uh, Jose, a, it's it, like, it's it's a five out of ten movie. I'm not gonna say it's shit. I've seen so much worse. Ant Man's worse. Shazam 2's worse. Watching The Mandalorian is worse. So I would rather watch Dungeons and Dragons again. But the, like it, the it, fat it, dragon was funny. I thought that was pretty funny. That was adorable. Yeah, the I fat like that dragon. part. I like the the GM insert character where he's like perfectly great at everything, and he talks in parables and. Then he walks away like an NPC in a straight line. I thought that was fucking hilarious. So <laughs> um, it's just like the, all the little Rocky's video game dead, things and D and D tabletop. That stuff. was done in Fire and Ice. Ralph Batchkey's Fire and Ice, and it's creepy. What did what talking to the dead, having a oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. A corpse to give you a story? They did that in Fire and Ice. Mm. But it's, it's a real just a phenomena of contrast that we have today. A okay movie or okay-ish good movie is great yeah this is, of the like, crap. You know, oh. dragons is a very average 2012 movie yes with a, the girl power stuff's there it's it's really there to say like it's in the early part because then the girls like become unimportant and just fall, kind of fall to the background <laughs> it's pretty funny except for uh they do that uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and i i think the the talk about the writers saying that they emasculate the men was overblown. It wasn't really in there because the, the ultimately the story brings that brings it back around and makes them not. I don't think I didn't worthless. see Because in the end, the, the the bad wizard he's so bad and he's de self deprecating all the time, and then he ends up that he was actually the whole time competent, and so was the the lead character. He was competent too. He, they make fun of him, yeah, but then like lot, I mean, tons yeah. of tons of movies that we love make fun of men what happened to the big bad that the red wizard was talking to in the window or whatever where'd he go what happened to who, him? who? oh the big the... Bad red wizard the oh i, I think that guy. yeah he's he's too much of a, a large villain that they wouldn't waste him on a first movie i think that's what they're doing i think you should waste your like they're not going to get a sequel oh probably not no i would i think that's what they were doing they're like oh this is like the the prequel the yeah person that like the henchman or something of the actual big bad kind of like darth vader and the it, emperor yeah in a way my kids like 
really pissed that I took him to that instead of John Wick 4 first. So. <laughs> you should have saw John Wick 4. That's way Dang. better. Take him to John Wick 4 on, uh, on Wednesday after my live stream with Chris Gore. Uh, do a marathon. Okay, $4.99. Pangea broke up during the flood. Uh, the continental drift was fast, not slow. It took a year. I'll send you the link, the video. They use facts to explain it. Um, I don't think in some... <clears throat> ah, shit. I'm losing my voice. I can't lose my voice. I got a whole video to record tonight. Hang on. Or at least two-thirds of one. Where was I? I think things happen faster in some cases than others. Not really sure about that, though. But I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to listen. Because I know, like... What's you you know what nerdy thing I did before I moved to Texas? I read all about the geology. So my wife, uh, when she took her shift of driving, just got on my phone and I read for like three hours Texas geology. <laughs> and uh Texas is the bottom of a sea. It's pretty much most of it is the bottom of an ocean, a sea. And it just crawled up to land over millions of years. And there's tons of evidence of it because, uh, you know, all we walk on here is limestone. It's nothing but limestone. It's not even dirt that far down. It's limestone. There's, it's everywhere. All the houses are made of it. The bridges are made of it. It's, it's pretty crazy. And it's not hard to like find a rock with a, with a shell in it here. Yeah. You Kinda find crazy. those all the time. Yep. Um, where California is like because it's on the San Andreas fault, it's just completely fucked up. It's tectonic plates, granite, it's all kinds of shit. Uh, and a lot of sediment, a lot of sediment from probably a tsunami or two. But Texas, it's been slowly just crawling out from a bottom of an ocean for millions of years. Uh, the Bob that God made mad for 1999, an expedition in the Grand Canyon would be cool. Yes, it would. Looking for that rumored Egyptian connection. I'd be curious if one of the reasons is it hasn't been looked uh, into more is due to large amounts of uranium present there. I heard about the uranium too. Um, the Well, I mean, I'm going to state the obvious. The Grand Canyon's really big and not every inch of it has been explored because it's hard. It's very difficult. Uh, Gary, any weird, ancient, unexplained things to look up in Michigan? That's a good question. Uh, yes, the, those copper mines I was talking about. Bunch of them in Michigan. Bunch of them. Odin79 for $5. There's probably one near you. Thank you for on the stream website. Crash, 6674 for $5. The Giza pyramids, casing stones that are still there are full of nubs, by the way. Yep. Those damn nubs. Gray nubs soul for $20. Everywhere. My drink... Uh, my drink were clean. I can't do that to the most genuine dude I've ever met in my life. Drugless drink from me. Okay. Except alcohol. You can Except alcohol for that. It. Uh, one fifth blacks kids team will be called the one eighth dunkers. This is channel. Surfer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one, qu one quarter blacks. Kid. It says one fifth. One oh, fifth. he, he reset the super chat. I see it now. <laughs> Uh, Nick Naylor for tw uh, $2. Wait. It's like Air Bud. What's going on down in Vegas? I missed uh, Ricada. Oh, we're doing a meetup. Mm -hmm. uh, April 26th, 24 days from today at the Millennium Fandom Bar. It's a Wednesday. Yes, it's the middle of the week, but it's Vegas. Whatever. Yep. Um, that's the one week we get the entire bar to ourselves. It's absolutely 100% free. There's we will drinks. buy plus free drinks and free tacos. Good time to be had by all. We'll have merchandise there for sale and stuff. Yeah. But uh, other than that. Um, Just to help us break even. From the yeah. And then I'm the bringing some hats. Day. We have F&T shirts. I'm uh, dropping a new shirt. Poster. Oof, looks so good. Oh, dude. Looks so good. oh, I'm so excited for that poster. So, um, and I'll be there from the 21st to the 28th, I believe. So uh, I'll be there all week. So we're going to do other yeah. things. Chrissy has a show the very next day. So that's like mm -hmm. another meetup. Go to chrissymayor.com for tickets. I think uh, most, if not all of us, are going to be there. So, Yep. Mm -hmm. Tuesday night. If I you buy the tickets you. now and sell it out, they'll add a second show. I was going to so. try to jump on Tuesday night's main event, but I got I got another thing I got to go to. I, but I can't talk about it till it happens. 
can't talk about it till it happens. But then the rest of the week, I want to go to Top Golf, hit some balls. I want to go back to Area 15 and get weird. Comic yep. books. We're going to go comic book hunting one day. Mm-hmm. I think before Chrissy's show, we should. That's where we should, when we should comic book hunt. Okay. Because we usually do it towards the end, and I think I want to do it in the middle this time. Mm-hmm. Well, and you have energy. Well, I'll have energy. I don't know about all the people who aren't sober. We'll be. I'll I'll get up. I'll have we'll some energy. Okay. Okay. I I have. I may have it. I had I, last time oh. we went to Area Fifty One. Uh, I had a headache. But really? That's your hangover. You're so young. Just a little bit of a just a little bit of a headache. Yeah. But the, the comic book hunting was fun. Uh, we'll go to Torpedo Comics again. Yeah, they have great comic books. Owned shows, by so. the drummer from System of a Down. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, cool. Isn't well, they wouldn't sell me the the helmet I'm pointing, so I just got my own. I was willing to buy it. I'm like, I'll <laughs> no, buy it. Fine. I'll get my own then. I'll get my own. I'll go find some, I'll find it somewhere else. It took it took a minute to find it. It wasn't easy to find, but. Uh, Mr. Wolverine 007 for twenty dollars. You and QBG need to go to the Dr. Carl bon- Bow's Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. I know where that is. I do. I've seen signs for that. Lots of cool ancient pre-flood stuff, including evidence of dinos and man existing at the same time. He talks. Uh, he's talked since the nineties about it. Yeah, there's also like dinosaur tracks here in Texas. Yep. What? Yeah, isn't uh, yeah. When you come down, we'll take you. When you come down, there's caverns here too. Tons of tons of caverns, caves everywhere, especially here in San Antonio. Jesus, caves scare me. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, uh, these are fine. Okay, totally safe. Okay. Uh, Fizzenthor for ten dollars. We need another evil wizard like David Warner's evil genius and Time Bandits. He was scary. Yes. That, need, that's like scar you for life. Scary. You need Terry yeah, Gilliam really to terrible. direct the stuff of your nightmare, your childish nightmares. Okay. Time Bandits. Should Time, I watch it? Yes. Yes. One of the greatest movies ever made. Okay. I'm putting it on the. It's list. Monty Python alum doing a a kit. It's a children's movie, but a very like one of the best takes on fantasy ever. Yeah. Like that's how you approach fantasy. Like even. Like fairy tale fantasy. It's very OG Grimm's brother, like uh, Brothers Grimm. Like, yeah, it's it's done in 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 um Terry Gilliam's very uniquely unequaled, will never be equaled again, surrealism. That guy is the dolly of filmmaking. Yeah. <clears throat> uh moldy fox. On the Streamlab side, for fifty dollars, I travel around the world and seen the nubs in Greece. They had them at the theater. They used to align and hang statues and ornaments. But why on the ground? Why on the ground? And the nubs go—they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And they used to think it was to like lift the rocks up, and they're like, "No, it can't be that because it's not on every rock." Hmm. So that that that's where the molding thing comes in. Maybe it's just where a guy kind of sat back and fucking slept. I don't know, <laughs> but like little chair. Yeah. It's very weird. It's very and a bear for oh four for twenty dollars. Hail to the fellowship. Been watching you guys for years now. First time super chat. I like all the content you put out better than most. All the garbage mainstream is crapping out today. Keep it up. You're welcome. We'll entertain each other. Fuck them. Right, fuck them. You can do it too. Uh, That's what's so great too. I love hearing people say, "Oh, look, I, uh, I'm just gonna make my own thing." Yep, I'm gonna go out there and make movie, or I'm gonna make a comic book. Make your own thing. Hey, there's a lot of stuff that's coming. Uh, that's not gonna have copyrights on them anymore. Yep. Five Every year, so there's man. another. I'm just so excited for that. Batman's I, coming up. I don't know if it's come up yet, and I and I gotta see the restriction, but like. The thing I'd be interested in doing is like a Buck Rogers or a Flash Gordon or a Conan or something, but but a Buck Rogers or a Flash Gordon, I would totally do. What's the earliest Flash Gordon? Mm. Uh, Buck Rogers, including the character of Anthony Rogers, uh, first appearance are now public domain in the USA. There you go. I thought so. Do a Buck Rogers right now. 
but you got to do it within certain parameters, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like if Superman, when Superman comes out, it has to be the 1930s. It has to be that version from that back then, yeah. Man, and that version only. And when Mickey Mouse comes out, it has to be that version. But I could still like totally work with that. Yeah. Hell yeah! Just all the pulp stuff they did. Um, a, a called Superpowers. It was dynamite. It was Alex Ross. They took a bunch of eminent domain superheroes and made a super team and it sucked and it's like god it was such a like you could have done so much better i'm just a channel doing do it now yeah. they went back to to old pulp and found all of these like discarded failed characters that are now public domain like the black terror he's making all like a whole new uh project out of it it's mm -hmm. kind of cool whatever the guy's name is uh i'm more into pulp than ever now i'm like going back i'm getting i'm starting to buy some of the like old weird tales and stuff and they're not that expensive compared to like some golden age comics mm -hmm. but you know like i said i just i just got the second appearance of fucking conan and it was like yeah wasn't that much wasn't that much i mean it's not like in mint condition but it doesn't need to be uh evan griffin for 1999, Hail Gary just wanted to show you some love. Today is 68 days sober. That is over two months to you and me. Uh, believe it or not, you have helped me keep my mind away from turning backwards. Three weeks hitting the gym. Let's fucking go. By the way, have you watched the Y Files? Uh, yes. The Y Files is yes. something we're we're gonna yeah. Or yeah. In the works. In the works. Love the Y Files and good for you keep going to the gym go to your meetings that is massive that is massive you're getting up to 90 days one day at a time though mm -hmm. one day at a time that's important because if you think about it like i'm just gonna quit forever it sounds intimidating and it's just it doesn't need to be you don't need to think that far ahead no future tripping uh tricky Twenty dollars. If you want to, I want some interesting info on the geology of Texas to Missouri. Look up the case uh, for the New Madrid earthquakes between 1811 and 1812, biggest in U.S. history, at 8.1 on the Richter scale. Um, I know about those. I do. I do. They were gnarly. That's a big one. Yeah. Oh, there's okay. there's earthquakes in Texas almost every day, but I think it's because of fracking. I mean, I don't give a shit. Frack away. <laughs> I've Go never ahead. felt one. Never noticed. I felt one here. I was very You're probably like attuned to the feeling of what a what an earthquake feels like. Yeah, I know exactly. I've never what felt it, yeah. so I'm like I wouldn't even know. I'd be like, oh, that's probably a truck. Oh yeah, I yeah, I have. I've past. been in an earthquake, and I thought it was just the subway. Uh, this yeah, time. this you know, just going by. <laughs> Biggest one I felt recently. Uh, was Napa a few years back. That one shook all the Bay Area. That was gnarly. Wow. Uh, that was like five years ago. Rizzo, what is this? Rizzo, Rizzo Sphere. Rizzo Sphere. This is the last one of the night. I hate to break it to you, but the hand scanner Bob described was a science magazine shortly before he described it in the story. It is in proof. Uh, what magazine? I want to. Which hand yeah, scan? What magazine. Which magazine was it? Because they they found the actual mechanism in the in the uh in. The, but if that's the case, what about Element One Fifteen? What about Area Fifty One? What about S Four? I mean, they were suspecting, like, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility that there were secret bases in the middle of the desert, but actually naming them. I don't know. I've seen a lot of people try to shoot down Bob Lazar, and he just wins every time, every single time. But I'll look. I'll look for that magazine. Yeah, and I want to know what that magazine Jeremy is. Jeremy Corbell so was the one who found it. It wasn't Bob. But even if it was in the magazine, do we know Bob saw it in the magazine? Or are you saying that Bob got it from the magazine because if it was in a magazine then he's just confirming what was already there <laughs> so he's proving is there 
One of the biggest problems with Bob has been um, his work at Los Alamos, right? But I think now we're pretty certain the government can erase people, uh, erase their information. The government would go to that, go to those kind of lengths. Um, I think recently we've seen a lot of proof that the government uh, is involved in every social media company here and is in trying to censor you now and circumvent our rights. So you don't think they would just shut some guy up who they can't kill because he went out and started talking. So the best thing to do would be discredit him, start destroying his records. And uh, Jeremy also found the guy who hired Bob for S4, which they couldn't find before. So there's a lot of stuff. Watch the documentary. And then also go back and listen to Bob's, one of his first interviews on Art Bell. Uh, go back and watch his old original interviews with George Knapp. And then go watch his interview with uh, Rogan and see how many differences you see in the story. There's none. There's none. He's really uncomfortable, doesn't like talking about this shit and doesn't need it and hates it, to be honest with you. And he has to be like, it's like pulling teeth to try to get this guy to do an interview. I was like Bob Lazar. Anytime I see him interview, he doesn't seem like he's like trying to sell something. He just seems like, I guess I'll tell you the story again. You know, it's just like kind of uncomfortable about it. It doesn't seem like somebody that's like, I, uh, when I first heard it, Oh, it look was, at this thing I'm making up and I'm trying to tell you and I'm trying to impress you. Fascinating. Like and I was very Fox Mulder. I'm like, I want to believe, but I can't totally. I mean, I want to, but then as time went on, it became pretty convincing. Uh, and I've emailed you again about Jonathan Gary's books. I highly encourage you to read them. Lots of reliable stuff about ancient civilizations and giants. Mr. Wolverine 007. I will read them. Jonathan. Dr. Joe. I think I have some of those now. I don't usually miss anybody talking about giants and ancient civilizations. It's rare. <laughs> you don't miss it. I have I have read so many of those books. That's why when Gavin was like, what book have you read? I'm like, which ancient civilization book would you like me to rattle off? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'll show you my uh... library full. Yep. <laughs> I, I put those books on the shelves when you moved in. There's you got a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of books. Yep. All right. Uh Jeremy Corbell One is more. not everybody's favorite person because he's very LA. That's just how people are in LA. That's he's very LA Burbank kind of dude. I don't think he's evil. I think he's just very schmoozy. Very mm. schmoozy. George Knapp is the shit. So I think I think Jeremy does a great job actually on the podcast with George Knapp. I think that's a that's a very entertaining podcast. But Jeremy Corbell is very Los Angeles. Very, very modern Los Angeles. Corbell, what you got coming up? I have Editing your video. So I'm just waiting. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> you poor soul. <laughs> yeah. Mandalorian. Got to watch that. So I'll be doing that. Uh, other cool. than that, you can just subscribe to my channel where I play video games every once in a while mm. on Rumble and YouTube. Per Perry's helping us out with that because I watched the first three at real time speed. And as I said in the Discord, oh, no. I have to hurt myself to feel right now. Because I am just not. I hurt myself today. <laughs> I'm watching that shit. Watched Mandalorian again. Yep. Uh, X ray girl? Uh, tomorrow I am going to be reviewing some Attack on Titan episodes, uh, some extras that have occurred that we I didn't even know about um, on Mark the Cyborg's channel. And then um, subscribe to my channel where I do. Conan Exiles and apparently Warhammer 40k. Model yeah. building. It's I fun. can't wait till you start painting. Me too. Painting is a lot of fun. Busy as hell. Sounds yeah. exciting to be honest with you. Well, the thing is, it's fun. And like, even now I'm reading, I, I finally got a Kobo. I love this thing, by the way. What, what is uh, it? A Kobo. You're just I'm figuring it out now, E Man? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is the game. This is the we gay. Are the big gay, okay? <laughs> this is the gay. This is the gay. Uh, um, Why? 
Are you gay? What yeah. Are you gay? I love classic okay. books. It's so good. The stuff that they have written in the past. And um, I'm, I'm glad to get back to some, some good stuff, as, including movies as well. I'm also Classics. watching Conan. Oh, I'm going to need like three good movies after this. I mean, I don't know why I came up with this ideal. I, I like halfway through, I was like, I wanted to abandon it. I wanted to like, I'm, I don't want to do this. But then it got so dumb. I'm like, oh, I have to do this. It's funny. It's funny how bad the show is now. Uh, it's it's comedy. It's pure comedy. That's how I experience these shitty shows is through you making a video about it. So <laughs> it's my only way. What is the simplified Much version of way. Earth Militude and how would you explain it in Superheroes Attitude and Actions? I wish to understand it better. Uh, Sir Ubasan for $5. A great example of verisimilitude in superhero content, live action content, is Daredevil. Daredevil. Probably the very best example of it. Um, at the time, Superman the movie, which seems silly in 70s because it was the 70s, but at the time, it was very grounded movie. Aside, even with turning the earth back, it was a very grounded film uh, for, for Superman because it was popping the 50s Superman in 1970s, basically. I think it also has something to do with being believable in the, in the world yeah, that you're in. similitude is... Don't cheapen the world that you build. You, you have a great Rose has verisimilitude, perfect it's, verisimilitude. Yeah. It it it's it it grounds it, but not too much. So it makes it you buy into the story as a serious story. What D Dungeons and Dragons does not have verisimilitude. It's very tongue in cheek. Sure, it doesn't. It's very tongue in cheek. Um, but verisimilitude is respecting the world and the story that you're telling so much that you feel like you're walking into another world. It's very real yeah. to you. And it could be, it could be science fiction. It could be fantasy, but I'd say one of the greatest examples is the daredevil show. Believability in the world that you're crafting or you're it has, watching. It has an authenticity to it. Yeah. Uh, will you guys do an episode of UFOs and ancient aliens? Yes. Uh, what do you think of the subject? If so, I think it'd be fun to discuss the stream. The Grizzly for five dollars. I am big into UFOs. Absolutely believe in aliens. It's Please on the list. Um, I don't think they made the pyramids, though. I don't. I think men did. Speaking of, hey, anniversary. Oh yeah, April second, nineteen sixty-six. So this is in the the movie Phenomenon. This is one of the single best pictures of a UFO ever. Click the first one. This is taken in 1966 in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia, on a Polaroid. Uh, is a UFO on its side above a house. Now go to the next picture. You see a reflection of the house in the UFO. So I'll show you the closer Again, reflection. This or... picture was taken in 1966. It's been around forever. Honestly, I hadn't seen it till I saw that documentary. Wow. But it's been around. Uh, and they showed the original. They got the guy who took it, and he had the original picture, and that is fucking insane. You can't like how clear that. that is. Wow. One of the best UFO pictures ever taken. So, um, thank you, Jeff Knox, for sharing that on Twitter. Uh, you should get Chris Leto on the show. We should. It's related to Jared? Jared Leto. Uh, any way to chat? To Jabber J, want to talk about ticks? Ticks for ticket. Um... Cosmic Summit, probably. Yeah, the extra one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and back down. Jabber J, you guys contact each other. Maybe there's a Connect. Twitter or something. Connect. Yes, yeah, so we 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 might have some more info on that later. So I've got to go so I can get back to this video get it to Garrett in a decent hour um and uh you're probably just gonna get the first two thirds today and the rest tomorrow but um yeah big uh okay do we have a confirm for tuesday yes yes okay confirmed 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 so on real bbc classic comic artist kelly jones will be joining us batman <laughs> comic artist Sandman, comic artist, will be joining us. Uh, yeah. Kelly 
Jones. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be quite the week. Super Mario Brothers coming out, so Jeremy's gonna be behind beside himself. Uh, Odin will be hoping it doesn't hit to a hit a billion dollars. I'll be just waiting to see who loses the bet so I can watch them eat pineapple pizza. I am gonna enjoy the hell out of this. I'll probably even go see the movie. Uh, and yeah, a lot of stuff coming up, but uh, Mandalorian video is my highest priority right now. But Kelly Jones on Tuesday, that's going to be fucking awesome. Um, thanks to Mrs. Nerdrotic for making it happen. Mm -hmm. Mrs. She makes a lot of things happen. She makes a lot of things happen. She's amazing. Including my dinner once in a while. It's pretty cool. <laughs> She's a good cook. She's a really good cook. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Everyone's All right. Uh, pure evil. <laughs> this is Lance Johnson. Hey. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Everyone who left a super chat and donation. You help keep the lights on here. Thanks to the Mod Rodics. Adam Krigler will, will return next week as long as his internet returns. He was abducted. Uh, was yeah, he was abducted. He's getting anally there probed. There was probed. I know. <laughs> He's going to come back and go, I don't know what happened. My ass sure hurts. He's walking <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, and we'll see you guys next time. See you Bye. later. Bye.